Oh my good, okay, live! I went live fast that time. Good evening to an impromptu stream. Well, no, I said I would come back today, but I was just, uh, it was supposed to be a James stream. And then um, I didn't prep the James stream, but I covered pumpkins and it's Devil's Night, so happy Devil's Night. Uh, yeah, Kenny, <laughs> I understand why. I mean, like Heather is way more entertaining. Um, and I think less evil than Leticia. I think that's how you say your name. Um, but yes, welcome to the stream. Uh, this is going to be a Heather Gillespie stream. Um, I just <laughs> like uh, in the last minute. So, and then I pushed it and I'm late, but I'm here. I'm here now, guys. All right. Uh, oh, um, I got to actually hold up. I gotta get this more prepped. I thought I had this open, but I guess I did not. But give me one second, I'll have it open. Um, okay, here we go. So, what we're gonna be watching, she so did this, this video was supposed to go up on Wednesday, but never, she never uploaded it for whatever reason. She it said it was uploading and then nothing kaput. Um, and she's already done a whole other hour live stream. So if I save this all for this Friday, we're going to be like really far behind or not, well, not far behind, but we'll probably have to split it up into two streams anyways, like a Friday, Saturday stream. Um, so I was like, we'll just watch it now in chronological order because we should have watched it on Friday, or at least on Saturday, but fucking, she didn't upload it till I think yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. Um, Stacy, how you doing? Amanda, hope you're doing well. Jay Morgans, hey, hey. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a surprise. It's a Devil's Night surprise. Um, and I do have this up over here now. So let me get this. Um, there we go. And let me just resize it real quick so it can fill up the screen here. Yeah, it's Monday. I don't. I would never. I don't usually do um, Heather streams on Mondays, but today is special. So this, like I said, is the live stream. I'm not. It's not a live stream. This is the hour-long video she uploaded uh, that was supposed to go up on Wednesday. And we'll just get this is pretty interesting. She's uh she's bad at Xavier in this one. So I haven't even been um, on Instagram really, other than to document all of the unlawful oppression. Um, but now I'm attempting to go live with a packet of documentation that was provided um from Northwestern Hospital. And again, this is nothing new, but just so that I can prove that I've done this not once or twice or three times or four times. We've been through this now a number of times. I'm talking into the 20s or 30s over the past four years where I've walked into places, police stations, fire departments, uh, hospitals, been seen for various reasons, been given a list of supposed resources and they don't work. And I'm going to turn the light on and go live and show all of this. But she can't. So, I, yeah, the main reason this was made was because Instagram said, hey, you're Heather Gillespie. You can't go live. Um, tough luck. Try again later. And she was mad about it. And then I don't know why it took from Wednesday to yesterday or the day before for her to upload it. Like, that seems fucking insane to me. Uh, in just a minute. But as soon as I decided to do so, look. So I haven't done anything to violate my... She also, like, I guess I should have put this the other way, but this is how she uploaded it to YouTube, like this. Uh, it says, try again later. Your account stand, uh, standard or setting. Oh, my God. Hold on. The only thing I've ever done on this Instagram is document the real, true story of the oppression and abuse that I have faced. And if documenting when someone does illegal things to you is illegal then I don't know where we must be in China so or not China where's that place where they're oppressive I she's shaking the phone too much it basically says like your account may be violating community guidelines I think that's what it said and that's why you can't go live um she doesn't know where North Korea is I think Xavier knows though 
Kong Jong Long lives there. He never poops. North Korea. North Korea or something. He's Kong Jong Dong the He never poops. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Um, okay, so your account activity may not follow our community guidelines. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much right. And I don't think I am in North Korea. I think I'm in the United States the last time I checked. Chicago Lincoln Park, right? So this is censorship. This is oppression. I'm literally here just trying to show the list of resources that do not work, that has been provided to us. To me, because I've been going through this before I met Xavier for now four years, uh, against my will. I have three children. And then Xavier came. He's like, I am sent from God, and my brother is the DA. We'll get all this sorted out. <laughs> but then he's, uh, I, I won't spoil anything. Children, and that's the only responsibility I have in this entire fucking world, is to raise my children. And these people are preventing me from doing so, so I'd like to know who they are, what they want, and why I'm not being permitted to go home, um, why I'm not receiving the restitution that I deserve, why I have been the victim of so many violent crimes that have not been picked up or charged by the state of Illinois, and what I need to do for resolution. I've gone live and called the state's, de state's attorney's department on this no less than 100 times between all of my uh, Instagram accounts and social media accounts. Um, I've done it across numerous different social media platforms with numerous different witnesses. I still to this day have not been provided a court date or any understanding of what is going on. I am being... No, she's been told lots of times what to do and what's going on. It's just she doesn't accept it or she argues with them. You know, one lady on the crazy June 6th day was like... What's <laughs> first? Is like, you have a lawyer? Like, what the fuck is he doing? And then was I just asking your questions about like related cases and how they go off and be like, nothing to do with anything. It's like, well, no, it kind of does. It kind of does. You're asking these questions. I'm you're not letting me answer. So, and then they usually hang up on her. Doesn't get very far. Being held against my will, metaphorically, physically, you name it. If I was not being held against my will, my vehicle would have never been destroyed. My bank account would have never been closed. My money would have never been taken from me. Every penny that I've acquired, I have acquired by earning it through legal resources, either unsanctioned donations, people randomly helping me, uh, personal training money. I don't know who she's trained. <laughs> the fuck is she trained? Consultation on small business. If you have a small business and you're consulting a homeless woman living at a tent talking like this. I don't think your small business is going to get very far. Is it like a drug business? Taking paid dates, exchanging time for money. Uh, I, I, I said something. I think it was more than just um, time. She was exchanging for money. Or selling content online. All of my W-2 jobs. Uh, working in hospitals, restaurants, et cetera, and so forth have all been legal. And all of oh, my self-employment endeavors have also all been legal. Staffing trade shows at McCormick Place, hiring people for that, offering them opportunity, managing uh, um, events, promoting events, all legal, and they are all taxed. I've paid my taxes every single year prior to being unlawfully thrown out of my home. And even after that, Ed Palmer filed taxes on my behalf and kept my COVID stimulus to repay him for the first month of Airbnb that he covered because I was, again, unlawfully thrown out of my home after waiting nearly five years for Dylan Smith to be released from the IDOC. Six episodes of the show Love After Lockup completely slandered my entire name, personality, reputation, and business. Everything that they aired was a lie. Them yeah, she does that to herself. The show didn't do that at all. The show didn't slander. She was on for like what? An N episode? Maybe two? I don't know. I haven't seen it. But one season tops. That's it. And everything's done. You can't keep like blaming everything on that. Um, Stacy, you're her aunt? Your aunt Stacy? lovely to meet you i hope you're doing well um i hope that heather is not bothering you too much these days i mean i hope that like this is just contained to her public outbursts and not like reaching out to you guys constantly or um yeah i'm saying that i was the reason he was going to be late i was the only person driving and telling him fuck this reality show you need to get to the house
He knew from the beginning that the reality show was nefarious. They said that uh, he said it's nefarious. I'm getting a bingo card ready, guys. I'm sorry. I thought I had the phone that I usually is already like set up, but um, I'm just grabbing the notes from this phone. To me, do not let them separate us and corner us and communicate with us individually. Any communications that you have with them need to be done with me. And that's not what happened. From the very first day, they were taking him across to the side, making nefarious storylines and plots that have to this day affected my ability to do business and my reputation. After that, I began being put under tremendous pressure, being accused of things, being followed and stalked by strangers, physically assaulted randomly, was bludgeoned, was beaten, was stabbed, and was separated from my three children for the first time in their entire lives. Other than, Other than all the times that like, you sent them away so you could be with fucking crackhead Dylan, right? Like, <laughs> you chose dick over your own kids and then you bitch about them every day now. Every fucking day. And that they lived with me at least five days, if not seven days, from the moments of their birth. And this is Heather Gillespie, and I have given you all of the information. In case you forgot who was talking, this is Heather Gillespie. Information that I'm comfortable giving from the side of the fucking road. I need an understanding of what is going on here because I've neither given my permission to be involved in any sort of weird studies, nor do I have any desire to do so. As I've said, what weird studies does she think she's a part of? Does she think she's like a science project? It doesn't. Did I not catch that? I've, I've watched this once, but I don't remember catching that. Hundreds of times. My one and only responsibility in this life is to raising my children, who I have three of, who have been displaced from my care for the past three and a half years, staying with friends and family members because we have nowhere else with my mother, with my sister, mostly with their father and their father's families. Why? Why are there ads running for Beagle on my fucking channel? I don't like, can I tell them that? I don't know. I don't like Beagle. Beagle is uh, like a pyramid scheme. Don't use Beagle. While I do the same. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea to do. I mean, like, it's my recommendation not to do it. I don't like them doing that. In redundant things that are incredibly abusive. Number one, holding someone on the side of the road or in a tent anywhere is incredibly abusive. You take away all of their privilege to privacy, and privacy is not a privilege. It is a right. It is a right. We all have a right to use the restroom and have bowel movements without an audience. We all have a right to go potty and eat food and sleep without an audience who is watching you go to the washroom and, and your only audience is when you put the camera in front of your face and maybe don't do that and then you won't have an audience to worry about watching you do all these things i don't like i hope you're not filming yourself taking shits like leticia did. that was that was pretty crazy we all have a right to sleep indoors where we are safe from any sort of attack uh physical or otherwise my rights have been denied numerous times. This is what they gave us two days ago, October 20. Hold on. The, the discharge paperwork is right here. October 23rd, Good. 2023. Okay. Heather Gillespie was seen for vomiting, abdominal pain, complicating pregnancy, and vomiting blood. I was discharged. They have my primary care physician on file. They are all on board. They know who my OB guy is that I've been seeing, Natasha Jensen, who I'm not not really sure if I'll be going back to. Um, it's very, very much out of my way. Uh, we don't live in the area where she practices, but you could see my vital signs were fine. So this is her showing like the hospital visit from Monday that I was skeptical about her even being in the hospital at first because it was weird. It was a weird thing. She was on her way to a production meeting first, and then she was on her way to a court meeting. Um, and then she also said something crazy happened that night, but we never found out what that was. Um, and then I, I, if you guys remember from the last time, if you're here on the last stream, I was like, we also didn't get this video, this hour long video, but this is that video. I still don't know what happened that night. Um, but then she was puking up blood McDonald's and had to go to the, the hospital. And this all happened in two hour intervals throughout the day. And it's very, I was like, what the heck is going on? But apparently, um, she's just showing, it did say that it was, she was vomiting blood. Um, I don't know what's going on there. It does say that she is pregnant. This would be a crazy thing for her to fake. And, um, 
I just I can't see her using her free printouts at the library or whatever to print out this, uh, opposed to her narrative that she fucking hands out every day. Um, and I was discharged. Okay, so these are discharge instructions indicating the only medication I take are prenatal vitamins. My baby is healthy. Um, and there was no other, you know, treatment that was needed. I was discharged uh, around 5 p.m. Now you go here. Uh, I, I specifically requested social work because, again, uh, I have three independent psychiatric evaluations on file since this, all of this drama took place, as well as my primary care physician, who prior to the pregnancy, I have seen every single month. I even saw the first month of the pregnancy. So four months it's been since I've seen Dr. Haresh. Um, and prior to that, I saw him every single month and have detailed summaries of every single visit and also the abuses that I've endured during that time. So I'm completely... But I don't know why you'd be telling that. I mean, unless he has medical evidence of these abuses happening, but in that case, like, why hasn't there been any prosecutions or anything? Uh, that to make me assume that there isn't any. And I don't know where this doctor went. Completely covered. Now let's go here. Resources for people without shelter. Now she's throwing, showing us like 311 shit. This has nothing to do with the fucking doctor. Like, I just care about the doctor. So, ah, I also can't get a fucking free apartment. No shit. N neither can the rest of the homeless people in Chicago, apparently. Maybe get the fuck out of Chicago. Maybe it's a Chicago problem. It's weird that you just keep trying the same thing over and over and over again and expecting things to be different. I don't know why you would do that. Right? I called every single one of these places the very first day they gave us this. So they discharged us around 4 or 5 p.m. I went upstairs, took a seat right across from the Panera Bread, and began making these calls. What did they say? Per Inglewood Center, none of the six locations offer shelter or housing, which is all that I need, right? So this is a dead end. Let's go to here. Catholic Charities. I have telephone records, forensic, uh, you know, accounting of my telephone records, whereabouts, and uh, debit cards. What? This is the three one shit. Why is she? Hold on. Yeah, this is resources for people with the yada yada. This isn't. What the fuck is she talking? She has detailed phone records. So what you called your phone company? Or <laughs> you just printed out your phone bill? Oh Heather, I don't know what she's talking about. I feel like I need to reset because now the bingo card's up. I have everything like actually proper. So welcome to the stream, guys. Um, Heather's being crazy as usual. Will prove to you that I have not only called these places once, I have been consistently calling them for a period of years at this point, at the very least 18 months with witness of Xavier. Before I met Xavier, I also spent hours on camera. If you go to the One Heather GEE account, you can see me calling the FBI. You could see me with these resources, the same list I was given today. This is the same thing they've been passing out since 2020. And I would sit in the forest preserve mm -hmm. out in the open of my car and literally at a picnic bench on a live camera calling every single one of these resources on a live camera calling the state's attorney's office reporting everything that had taken place she's talking about june 6 because june 6 was crazy i thought there was a part two to june 6 but i think maybe i'm crazy I might be crazy. Asking them for assistance. We are four years in and I have still not received the assistance that I deserve. Yet halfway through this, I was rescued by someone who was using military language, representing themselves as someone from some member of law enforcement or the military who was there to assist me. Multiple people removed from the side of the street where I was being kept or the Airbnb where I was being kept. I was given a Honda Civic to replace my Cadillac CTS that was intentionally destroyed while I was parked in a gated community in Barrington. Okay. And three months after receiving the apartment in the car, I was told that I needed to quote, suck dick for a Cadillac. Who told her this? Did the fucking rental company tell her this? I mean, maybe she talked some, some poor customer service agents ear off to the point where he was like, 
You want to you want a Cadillac? It's like fucking seven thousand dollars. You want a Cadillac? You gotta go suck some dick for some Cadillac because that's like uh, that. She took it as like they're actually telling me to do that. I don't know. I can only speculate. Or settle for the Honda. I made sure that I communicated to Eric Schull that I would most certainly not be sucking dick, that I thought he was a disgusting individual, that after a woman who he knew, myself, had been human sex trafficked and had escaped being human sex trafficked, how dare you ask me to give oral sex for a Cadillac? You should lose your job if you have one. You should be arrested for sexual coercion and extortion and exploitation. But instead, I kept the, the Honda and he got me a studio apartment. Three months. Okay, so this is Eric. I'm not too familiar with Eric, um, but it was a borrow from, or not Eric. Am I saying Eric? Or it's from Ed. Ed or Eric? I don't know. I think it might be Ed. Uh, the guy who rented her the apartment. Months I was in that apartment with a lease in my name and my name alone being Eric. broken into robbed on a regular basis, robbed for money, robbed for food, robbed for clothing. I never gave verbal permission or written permission for a single person to be in my apartment space. I thought you were going to be like, I never gave anyone permission to rob me. I'd be like, who the fuck would? The only people I gave permission to be in my apartment space ever are my three biological children, Viviana, Lewis, and Alexis. And none of them were allowed over even once. Why? I don't know. I could not tell you. I have legal <laughs> primary joint custody as i have since the day they were born their fathers have been weekend fathers at best they've given me whatever little you know money assistance they could and their parents so their father's families have stepped up when it comes to babysitting so i could go to work his both of their mothers oh, have shit. almost eric was a co-signer too because she was going off about a co-signer recently like in i think the last stream from this week that just passed, uh, which is which technically this. This is like from the past. This is from Wednesday. She recorded this, um, or at least tried to upload it. So it's weird. Heather's got to get on her own chronological shit better. It's <laughs> never said no, that they would not take the kids. His father, uh, Lewis's father, did all of the driving back and forth, and I would have been lost without him because I didn't have a car that entire time. And for that, I am very grateful. But primary custody has always been with me, and that is where it needs to be. I am the children's mother. I am of sound mind. So now you go to the fact that I had an apartment that was batter rammed by four fake police officers only three months after moving in, and that the Honda Civic that I was driving and given to replace my uh uh, Cadillac that was stolen from me and destroyed that was also stolen out of the parking lot of the Montclair where I was living. Eric or someone pretending to be Eric said there we go. Yeah, Eric. Sent me a text message saying that he had taken the car to get the tires replaced and that he'd be returning it within a few hours. I never heard from Eric again and I never He has 100% primary joint custody. <laughs> like Heather likes to say. I mean, no, I'm glad that he has like actual custody. I'm glad that Heather does not have custody. Um, I know that she always does these lives and these videos where she's like, I'm going to see my kids. I'm as far as I know, she's not supposed to be doing that, right? Like she's not supposed to be seeing the kids. So I hope that she stops doing that. Do you, if that is the case, why isn't why don't they like arrest her or anything for that? Or they just go just kind of throw their hands in the air and say, nope, I don't know what's going on there. Received the car back. I tried to call him. There was no answer. Now, fast forward to where we are today. With Xavier as a witness, I've been calling on the same resources that I began calling on in 2020, and they are all dead ends. So all of these community shelters are dead ends. There are no heating centers. The only heating center left in the city is at Northwestern Hospital. They allow uh, 30 people at a time. They do not allow you to sleep. Uh, they allow you to sleep if you can sleep, if you can do so sitting up in a chair. I am nearing my 25th, I'm sorry, tw yes, 25th week of pregnancy. That's six months plus pregnant. I am uncomfortable. I will not be sitting up sleeping in a chair. Okay. Now you look at these shelter, uh, Catholic charities. You can go in my phone record or on any of my lives. I've called all of these. They have no resources available. Call them right now and listen to their voicemail box. They are not even accepting applications for assistance through Catholic charities. 311. I have been on a waiting list through 311. And again, this is Heather Gillespie. 
Just in case you forgot, who the hell else would be saying this? Who? Who in the world? Here's where I checked in to prove that I was there on uh, all the times I was there. Look at 2021, August 25th, September 16th, just this Tuesday. Here we go to 311. I don't even know what those text messages say. Is it just like, <laughs> stop texting us? All the jobs I've applied to, all the resumes I've sent out, all of the documenting I've done. Now you have 311 here responding back, stating that on September 2nd, 2021. Oh, I hate, look at this. Hold on. Oh, we got something. Okay. Um, uh, what does it say? It just says you opted in for the text things. For more alerts, go here, press stop here. She's not reading anything. What the fuck is she talking about? I called for assistance. That just is nothing. And the same thing on September 3rd. And the same thing on October 2nd. What do any of these even mean? Hold on. Um, there's no information here. I thought that maybe it would have, like, maybe one of these numbers would link to a thing. Maybe that's what these numbers do do, like these SR23 numbers. Maybe we could find out what actually happened on these calls. But probably not. I if they're take if we're fucking <laughs> first off, I don't think they would just give us calls. Second, I don't think they're keeping like a detailed notes of what Heather is saying when she calls in because I wouldn't. That she just goes off and off and off. And I'd be like, I don't even know how to process what you're saying, let alone put it into notes. So I don't know. This is all just nonsense. And this is 2021. And I had two or three other phone numbers during this time that were disconnected without my choice. Uh, Ed Palmer was the uh, account holder on those accounts. And he was, you know, um, you know, extorted, strong armed. He went through whatever he went through while I was being physically attacked, bludgeoned and raped and stabbed. Uh, I'm sure he had pressure to disconnect the phone because abruptly, when I was in my apartment at Montclair with no warning, without having had an argument or anything, he disconnected my phone and took his credit card off of my blog, mercifulstorm.com. I had the blog specifically written because I was documenting everything, all of the abuse that had taken place because I was exhausted of being forced back into the trauma of talking about it all over and over. If you've ever been raped or beaten. That's exactly what... Uh... Latidia was saying last night. Or bludgeoned or stabbed. It is incredibly traumatic. You do not want to discuss it one time, let alone thousands of times. And that's where I'm at. I'm into the thousands at this point. So he disconnected my phone. Please feel free to take out a warrant on that phone line because you'll see I've done nothing wrong. You'll also see that I've been calling all of these resources since 2020. Okay. And getting nowhere. So he disconnects my phone, leaves me no phone or communication other than the Google voice number that I've been using. But ironically, the only calls that Google voice is permitting to come through. Who else do you think is trying to contact is trolls basically is what she could say. Are these unknown numbers? So I block unknown calls, turn off notifications for Google Voice, and this is all that Google Voice allows to come through. Yet I'm the one receiving account warnings threatening to suspend my account on socials for going live and exposing this and on Google Voice for exposing this. And no one is offering me any sort of vindication, justice, uh, human, any of my human rights or any of my legal rights. They're looking. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Like the baby's inside her. She has to, oh, it must be absorbing all these emotions and hearing all this. Looking uh. at all of the proof I have, they're looking at the fact that people were arrested when I was bludgeoned. Someone was arrested for that on the scene. There were several witnesses, but they're denying me victim services, stating that no arrests have been made. That is a lie. That is a blatant lie. I am owed a major amount of money. Me, Heather Gillespie, right. not me and whoever the fuck else strangers are claiming that they helped me, just me.
No one was there with me while I was getting stabbed. No one was there with me while I was getting bludgeoned. No one has been there with me on the side of the fucking road. And with the exception of Xavier over the last 18 months, I've been alone. Do you not get that? I have been alone outside by myself recording and documenting alone. No camera crew, no support. Is that what she wants? A camera crew? No funding. I starved for nearly four days before I brought myself to steal a protein bar and I didn't hide it. I showed it to the security camera in hopes that some sort of federal organization would come here and realize that I am being oppressed out of earning my own money. What? I just showed the security camera. I was stealing this. You better come find me and realize I'm being oppressed and save me. That's not what? <laughs> I commit crimes to be saved, guys. And starved and exhausted in the street. And no one has showed up to this day. Why is your wallpaper the street? I would figure, like, if you're living on the street, you would want to see anything else but the fucking street. Why isn't it like the ocean? Even though, fuck the ocean, too. Um, it could be... Like lots of nice things, not the street. So I'm not afraid of any of you because I know the truth. Now, the only drug that I've ever engaged in in this entire period is pot for my anxiety or my pain. I don't even use recreational drugs or alcohol. The happy parts of the ocean are amazing, like where the little mermaid lives and it's all like under the sea. Dun, 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 dun. But there's also like there's crazy giant squids and uh, what like the mega shark maybe <laughs> the mega shark maybe. But even like the regular sharks for surezies is like so I don't I don't know I'm scared of the ocean. I only allow for green marijuana to be smoked because I don't trust these fucking creeps. What? <laughs> it's just just green. I don't want any of the perps. I don't want any of those fucking the raggedy per or fucking brown weed. Um, what other colors does weed come in? I guess it could be yellow if it's like uh, has a deficiency and you harvest it at the wrong time. Um, it could be. Uh, is Blue Dream actually blue? You guys want to look up some pictures of weed on the stream? Actually, I don't know if YouTube will like that, but I'll still, for like, you know, educational purposes, we'll see if there's any blue weed. Not even Xavier to give me something that isn't green and say that it is marijuana. I don't do any other drugs and have never voluntarily done any hard drug in my entire life. Never. Not one time ever in my life. Ever. Never. Recreationally, I've... That's a lie, though. Like, she was... A, <laughs> a, do I need to bust out the... um Her Huffin Air Duster for four or two days? You guys know that clip, right? If anyone hasn't seen that clip, let me know. Uh, and I'll... I'll pull it up. Also, it looks like there's blue weed. I mean, technically, you could make weed any color, maybe, because uh, you could just put food coloring in the water. I've seen pink weed. Um, so weed can come in every color, I guess. But she only smokes green weed. Tried an ecstasy or a mushroom. I have never done crack. I have never done heroin. I have never done methamphetamine. None of that. Never has it been my jam. Never have I wanted it. Never have I had desire to have it. I do not like people who do it around. Uh, fucking Adderall is an amphetamine, though. Around me, I do judge them. I don't like it. Rationally, I can understand why these people would have the need for medications like this or to self-medicate. I can see just from the perspective of homelessness how that would affect your mind being degraded and, you know, dehumanized in this way for extended periods of time. There's like... Um, there's must be better ways to, <laughs> to hide weed for the dozen spraying it with coca-cola why coca-cola either like uh, i could see maybe mountain dew or sprite sprite's clear and it'd be like add some weight to it it wouldn't taste it's not gonna taste good and it's coca-cola when it dries it's really like uh, you know i don't know and how that would push people into drug abuse. I don't need to be forced into drug abuse. I should be a business consultant for drug runners who are spraying their weed with fucking Coca-Cola. Why are you doing that? That's crazy. To understand that. I can deploy compassion 
for that situation and understanding without having to go through it. There is no part of that that I, that I want to be around. I have lived with addicts. I have had cousins who are addicts. I have watched them rob my aunts blind for, for anything in their purse. I don't want it around me. Do not want it. There has never been a point in my life where anyone in my family has had to feel afraid to leave their purse by me or loose money around me. I don't steal from people. As I said, my theft career began when you motherfuckers began oppressing me out of employment, locking me outdoors, forcing me into physical uh, situations. I think the only people who locked her outside were like, people are sick of having her in her house. But no one was like, you have to live out here indefinitely. She just doesn't want to do anything to get herself out of there. Um, BCG, I don't know. I was talking to them and I, I just decided at 930 I was going to do this. So they might be busy. <laughs> That's why they're not here. If I gave them more notice, they'd probably be here. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll show up. ...of sleep deprivation combined with intense exercise and no food or calories. Because I said I would come and stream for you guys today and I didn't prep the James stream, but I kept my word. I'm here, guys. I'm here. That is when I first stole any fucking thing to eat. And that was in 2022 because I was still receiving checks from Love After Lockup as well as driving DoorDash prior to 2022. We're just in 2023 now. Okay. So what's really my history? I don't know, Heather. It's hard to tell. I mean, like most of it is documented, though, even by yourself, yourself and love after lockup. But cooking with science, no, you got you're good. If you have an invite tomorrow morning, um, it's midnight tomorrow, so like November first, basically at midnight. So the cutoff. Um, I'm depending depending on how many submissions come in, I might be a little lenient with that, maybe. Um, but basically the stream is going to be at, at 9 p.m. on November 1st for the Halloween costume contest. Uh, I, so I have to prep before that. And if you don't make it into the prep, that's why I want everyone's to be in at like midnight on the 1st if you can. If someone gets a job and they're chased out of that, never, ever have I been a cocaine addict or, or user, ever. You so weird. Like most people... Why is she bringing that specific drug up? Unless like you maybe have done it. The only time you would ever even see me pretending to use cocaine. Why the fuck would you be pretending to use cocaine? Like, <laughs> Is if a client or a service was dependent on my using it. And what, who, why, what the fucking, what scenario would that be a thing? What? What? And believe it or not, there are a lot of people who will not hire you, especially when they are paranoid drug users. Don't get jobs. Like, why are you taking jobs from paranoid drug users? What are these jobs? I swear her, she just thinks her life is Grand Theft Auto. What, you, what is this? What she says at one point in this video, I want to play this video in court. And you're saying stuff like this. What is this? unless you at the very least pretend to be one because if they're using then they're the bad guy unless you're using too and i've never been a drug user so i don't even use cocaine so all of you who are walking around here working for the state of illinois i don't even use cocaine guys okay i don't even and all the other drugs but specifically not cocaine even i just pretended to sometimes for the my boss who are partying every weekend I don't do it. So yes, I'm even better than you in that sense. And that's not ego. That's you walking around with your expensive education, thinking that you're better than me or saying that you're better than me or saying that you don't deserve to be outside in a tent, but I do for some reason. No, I don't. And if you really want to gauge by morality, you people are aware of what's going on and don't do anything to help. You sit in your high rises, snorking up your fucking lines of drugs day after day. And when I'm with you people, I know I'm with you because I stop getting fed. I get fed usually three times a day when I'm being held out here. What the fuck? Okay. I mean, so if she was escorting or hooking, right? If she's being a hooker and these were her pimps. She's also like expecting to be fed three times a day 
But is any other, I guess McDonald's would feed you once a day, like once a shift, right? I don't know if they still do that anymore. When I was a kid, when I was 14 years old working at McDonald's, um, they gave me a free meal. Actually, no, I think they gave it like half off. So, but no, that's, you're in the wrong, like, what the fuck time are you going to feed you three times a day? But when I start getting transferred over to the drug addicts group, I only get fed one time or a half a time. You know why? Because all of you drug addicts. Who uh, okay. Well, she's expecting to be fed by her clients, I guess. And like, she's saying, <laughs> I only want to hook up with the uh, normal guys who aren't drug addicts. So then when she starts like having the clients who are drug addicts, that's when they don't feed her or anything. I mean, you're not getting younger, Heather, and now you're pregnant. It's, it's not gonna, of course, drug addicts are going to be the only people that interest you at some point, especially when you're leaving the light, life, leading the life you're living. To take over control, you don't have an appetite because you're high. I'm not high and I'm pregnant and I'm a fucking athlete. I was going to say, I guess she's not escorting while she's pregnant, but like, she just said that. So I get hungry. You see how that works? Three to five times a day, I get hungry every day. Okay. So back to this list of bullshit. These are the same resources they've been handing me since 2021. I've gone down the list and called all of them. Catholic Charities is no longer an option. These overnight shelters, they allow you to bring one bag, a backpack. That is all you are allowed to bring. I, as you can see, I have clothing. I have production equipment. I have makeup. I have a novel that I'm writing. I have a, a stack this thick of police reports. She's like a hoarder, but homeless. I mean, literally, she the two carts. I mean, I guess it's nice she's down to one cart, but Xavier had to get rid of all his wet magazines. Poor Xavier. Um, so Candace said her cousin said that she was snorting coke all over the counters of the bathroom of a funeral home, all geeked out and screaming at her relatives um, at her uncle's funeral, which is crazy. And Stacy says that it was her husband's funeral. Oh, so yeah, your husband's funeral. That's terrible, Stacy. I'm sorry that that I just I'm sorry you have to deal with that. Um, it's like it's fun knee to see how they're acting like this but like, when she's outside homeless and uh, everything but i don't know you shouldn't have to deal with that that's not a. that's just not of police reports and other legal proof and medical proof uh the lease agreements from my apartments um all of the police reports that have been filed at Montclair with regards to the thefts and robberies, uh, all of the requests I have to file civil suit against law enforcement officers who have been called and responded to the scene of the crime and asked me if I needed a doctor rather than offered me any legal. No, I think you're right, Camden, because if it was her uncle and you're her aunt, Stacy, and if it was her husband, that would have been her uncle, right? I just was, I read it. I think I read something wrong, but no, I think every, I think everyone was right. And I'm just sorry that happened, Stacey. Legal assistance. My apartment was broken into and never, not one time were fingerprints dusted for. Not one time. Law enforcement responded. I gave them a sheet, a bed sheet that was filled with bodily fluids. I've not had voluntary sex with anyone. Every single person who has had sex with me after Dylan has either raped me or threatened to throw me outside in the street again if I didn't allow them to have sex with me. And poor Xavier is probably sitting in the corner being like, she's gonna, she's gonna throw me, like she's gonna exclude me in this, right? Hopefully, hopefully. Xavier is the first person I had consensual sex with. You might- And I was like, phew, that was close. Include JR, uh, but again, I was stranded in the middle of Valdosta, Georgia with no car and being offered the decision of, being left abandoned on the side of the road or allowing him to have sex with me. What would you choose? So the feds or whatever authority has been monitoring this situation has been looking the other way and allowing me to literally be raped on a semi-regular basis since 2020. And I want to press charges. In addition to rape and sexual assault, I have been, as I said, stalked all over the country. My vehicle. <coughs> <coughs> a cat. 
what would James do in this situation? I don't think James would be in this situation. Um, it's funny because I learned the other day that James has never been to Chicago and Heather won't fucking leave Chicago. And that's why they've never met. So we need to get James in Chicago somehow. I think that'd be easier. James goes all over the damn place anyways, right? So if we can get him into Chicago, I think great things could happen. But yes, what would James do? I don't know what James would do if he found himself in this situation. Probably dig himself deeper is what I'd say. Cadillac CTS that I paid for a loan with the exception of my down payment given to me by Amy Bolin, who was working as my assistant at the time. Um, I paid every payment on my own. Uh, even when they closed my bank account uh, because it was a smart access card and I was being skimmed and you can only receive smart access cards through the mail. So I had to close my account temporarily. A few people paid my car note. I gave them cash. Charlie Keen, I worked for him cleaning his home and monitoring his diabetes for several weeks or months. He would pay me in cash. I would give him back what I needed to pay my bills. And he would, from the parking lot of Chase at the ATM, in his Jeep with me being the driver and having Capital One on speakerphone, he would make the payment and give authorization verbally. I have never stolen money from these people. I don't do fraud. What you are doing to me is oppressive and illegal. After making the final payment on my vehicle and being told that the uh, title was going to be mailed to my Mama Nelly's house, 55, uh, 5425 North Patterson, I believe is the address, uh, where I lived for many years in the basement apartment, after Capital One said that they were releasing the title to that address to my name, someone called and said, pretended to be me, and asked to have it released to my uh, primary loan signer, who is Amy Bullen. I had no credit, so Amy was my co-signer. That car was... Ah, oh, okay. So, yeah, I thought it was a chick. So, like, I guess this might be a different car then? Or is she just getting... Is she lying? And was it Eric? And I don't know. I, can, I don't ever know what's true with Heather and what's not true. I mean, like, a majority of it's not true, right? But there's a little truth sprinkled here and there. It's just hard to tell what the fuck. <laughs> this is what is real finance through MNL imports. Amy was not supposed to be on the deed at all. Not at all. She did not make a single payment. She was simply my co-signer. And I do have recorded audio of Mike, the salesperson at MNL imports who sold me the car, not us, the car, me, the car to prove that. Yet somehow they stole my title after I made my last payment to capital one and destroyed my vehicle. Make any of this make sense, please. Please. Now, all of these resources that I've been calling on since 2021 are completely false. Catholic Charities is not open. We've gone in. Xavier. <laughs> okay, this is a really good part. This is going to be amazing. You guys will love this. Trust me, you'll love this. So Xavier is playing with uh, a bag in the back. I think... He's either getting weed out or maybe he's huffing helium or nitrous oxide out of a bag. I don't know. But this is something special. Can you be respectful, please? I'd like to have one recorded document that's not you in the background smoking weed and fucking making noise out of plastic bags. Is that acceptable? I don't. I can't edit this shit on my own. They're clearly blocking me from going. What fucking editing went into this at all? Like, you could have just opened, I don't know what the Android um, equivalent of iMovie is, but you could have just trimmed this out. <laughs> she didn't edit any. I can't edit this myself. You can't edit anything, apparently. Going live, it's difficult for me to upload these things as it is. Can I have one video that you are not creating a disturbance in the background? Please. I have called all of these. These overnight shelters are incredibly predatory. They are rape havens. You get robbed. You get stabbed if you Google these places. So now Xavier's just trying to quietly smoke in the back. But she is, uh, she's already on him now. She's going to go crazy and start interrogating him. And it gets pretty interesting. None of these are open other than Pacific Garden Mission. This is the only one open. This one is not open. This one is not open. And this one is not open. Even with these three, you cannot get into them unless you call 311. I think Xavier is just like a Jedi ninja at being able to deal with crazy women. 
is my son. He's his parents are apparently rich and he just likes being homeless and living like this, like a drug addict. So he doesn't look disabled, but um, maybe, I don't know. Okay, and I just called on recording yesterday from Northwestern Hospital where I was handed this information and they said that on recording, okay? Numerous open tickets per, um, <coughs> to 311 per NMH. Uh, 311 has not picked up anyone since just after COVID. So that would be the 2021 time. Now we have all of these places, Sarah Circle, Deborah's Place, uh, Center and Halstead. I'm convinced these are fake, okay? I I don't know what I'm hearing. I'm hearing something in the background. I'm convinced that these don't even exist. But when I call, someone answers. They are 50, 50 women capacity, women only, 50 women capacity programs that are all full with waiting lists you can only access through 311. So I mean, I ask myself this every day. Why does Xavier stay with her? Maybe Xavier was a fan before meeting Heather. And you know how like we watch Heather. Maybe he was like, I could get like the inside scoop. I could be a fly on the wall. Maybe he's just collecting intel over years for the time. And then he's just going to start his own channel. <laughs> be like, That'd be crazy. That'd be fucking crazy. But uh, I, I really don't know. I think um, maybe there's something messed up with it. So these people don't even have private waiting lists. You have to go through 311, which is not picking anyone up and hasn't since 2021. Hello? So I've called all of these and none of them work. Now, I've already done all of this, yet for some reason, Chicago police continues to be deployed and dispatched to random locations where I find to set up my tent. So you're telling me I cannot have a tent set up he does, but then now she's also puking up blood, and then the twins were miscarried. Like, what if I don't want to sound nefarious? What if he has some kind of involvement with that? I was trying to get her to do some hard drugs the other day, too, like off camera. That wasn't weed. Um, and he might be like, you know, she'll stay with me if she has my kid. You know what I mean? So, like, it might be, it might be crazy. Xavier might be the super villain in this. <laughs> this is just a very high theory and um i'm not i'm I'm like half serious i don't know but um i don't know i kind of like xavier because he's, he's funny as fuck to me at least i think he's funny i hope he's not secretly a super villain but that would be a crazy twist or you don't think i'm supposed to have a tent set up but then once i go through this entire speech which is exhausting and no one pays me for they walk away with their tails between their legs or they physically beat the fuck out of me. Those have been the two options. And yes, law enforcement has, while pregnant, physically thrown me onto the ground and beaten me up for no reason. Xavier, do you want to testify as to what happened when we were in Schiller Park? All right, here we go. This is the interrogation of Xavier. You were, you were brutalized. No, what happened? <laughs> you were you were brutalized. Um, I mean, yeah, he's just chilling, getting high. Happened, analytically, not emotionally. We were doing what in Schiller Park? A photo shoot. On our way to visit who? The children. Who you never see, I see alone, and you wait patiently and respectfully about a block away, or in you know the gazebo or whatever. If I'm hanging out with them in the park, he goes to another area, whatever. That's weird. Why can't he be around the photo shoot? Why does he need to be like a block away? And then if something bad happens, you know she's going to blame Xavier for not being there, right? So like, why the fuck are you doing that? So we're on our way to visit the children and Schiller Park police do what? While we're doing the photo shoot in a public gazebo at a park that I intentionally went to right across from the police station because I thought it would be safe. Um, he uh, approached us. Around what time would you say? Noon? 3 p.m. Earlier in the day. I think it was about 3 p.m. Earlier in the day and told us not to leave our stuff. Not to leave our stuff. Attended. Or the trash man would throw it away. Did they ever at any time ask us to leave? No. Did they ever at any time say we were doing anything in violation of the law? No. Okay. So we were approached by the same three officers who beat me later on that night. They said we were doing nothing wrong, gave us permission to be there in a public park doing a photo shoot. So I'm doing my makeup. We wrap the photo shoot and Xavier says he's from a sponsor going to pick up a pizza. 
from a sponsor. <laughs> Who's the sponsor? Domino's. Domino's is sponsoring us. Gonna go pick up a cheese pizza so Heather can bitch about a clogging the city of uh Chicago. Um yeah, I don't know, man. What did I say to you when you told me that you were gonna go? And why didn't I want you to leave? So why wouldn't you go with him then to go get this pizza from the sponsor? I think we both knew or either you or I said that they were going to. Hold on. This is really quiet. I told you that those, uh, those police were on bullshit. Yeah. Right. And that I didn't want to be left alone without a witness. Xavier insisted that it would be fine and that he would be right back got on his bicycle, and began to leave. It was literally just around the corner. Less than 30 seconds. Xavier has a bicycle? Oh, I remember Heather actually saying she balanced the bicycle on one of those carts. Why don't they, like, uh-uh. I guess it wouldn't make sense, actually. I was going to say, they could tow the cart with the bicycle now. Like, you could attach the cart to the back of the bicycle. They need a tandem bicycle. You guys could get around so much faster if you towed that stupid car with a tandem bicycle than just fucking pushing the bicycle and the cart. That just to me, that doesn't make any sense. Seconds after he left. Now, what was I doing when you left? I was laying down on what? A yoga mat. With all of my belongings, were all of my belongings spread around or had I cleanly and neatly packed them up and put them onto the cart and laid down peacefully on, on my yoga mat under the gazebo waiting for you to return with the pizza? They were so they were neatly packed up. So my belongings are neatly packed up and I'm laying down on a yoga mat, minding my own business, at which point in time the three officers come back. Xavier was not there for this. Okay. All right. So this is how uh, Xavier was not here for the three officers because he was off getting the pizza. Remember, she wants to show this in court. Okay. When they come back, they are wearing gloves. They park their car. All of them are wearing gloves, latex gloves, as if they have premeditated intent, as if they have been conspiring to put hands on me because you don't wear latex gloves to approach someone unless you have a premeditation that you're going to put hands on them. Correct. Uh, I don't know. I don't really like people's hands when they're approaching me. Maybe I should. <laughs> okay, great. So at that point in time, Xavier comes back. <clears throat> he didn't have time to get the pizza. So you come back and you see me laying on the ground in a defenseless position, surrounded by three officers, pointing their flashlights in my face, wearing latex gloves, correct? All, all I kept yelling was, all I kept screaming was that she's pregnant. She's pregnant, she's pregnant, she's pregnant. She's pregnant. That's what Xavier is screaming, or that's what the cops are screaming? So we're clearly terrified, both of us, uh, surrounded by people with guns and weapons and latex gloves, and I... And they say, you need to get out of here. And I say, okay, you need to learn how to treat people. And I'm the whole time I'm talking to them, I'm getting up and rolling up my yoga mat. Everything else is already packed. Nah, maybe just don't. Don't talk back, just leave. I'm telling them, you need to back up, I'm pregnant. I have rights here too. And I am asserting myself in ways that are legal and ethical. Correct? Correct or incorrect? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So... I'm not beating up the cops. I'm not a threat to the cops. I'm doing nothing wrong. I am grabbed from where I am putting my yoga mat away. Tackled. tackled dragged. Dragged. dragged in about five to ten feet on my back, on my stomach, I'm sorry, 14 weeks pregnant with this pregnancy by three officers who premeditatively put their hands on me. Because they were wearing the latex gloves. And why is it that the police only attack me when I'm going out to visit my children? I thought you were you were meeting the photographer and Xavier had to stay away. And um, then he came back with the pizza and all this was happening. When did the fucking children come into this? Every single time that we go out to visit my children, either the police are overly friendly and helpful or they are attacking us. <laughs> okay. Would you like a happy median? You know what I'm saying? Would they like a little bit helpful? Just tack you a little bit? It's like either one or the other. I don't know. What? Every single time. And the last time they tried to attack us in Schiller Park, um, or maybe it wasn't Schiller, right there by where the, the forest is, all the, all the forest preserves are on Irving and Lawrence and that. We were approached by one lone uh, lady cop who I think was going to attack... <coughs> 
attack me if I didn't have a witness. Um, it's just, it's bad when your own story doesn't make any fucking sense, you know? So yeah, apparently she was waiting for the people. Like, that's what she said. She's like, I finished up the photo shoot. I was laying on the yoga mat. Xavier went to go get pizza. I said he shouldn't because something bad will happen. Xavier was like, don't worry, nothing bad is going to happen. I'll be back with the pizza. And then the cops approached her with the latex gloves and attacked her. And then she was like, it's only when I see my kids. But she never mentioned anything about the kids before that. I don't know. She's crazy. And there were literally hundreds of mopeds driving by illegal uh, unregistered motorbikes <laughs> okay this is actually this is where you really see like obviously you guys are fucking full of shit the mo i forgot about the moped gang there's a moped gang and apparently the police mistook her as the leader of the moped gang and arrested her or i don't know listen to this shit am i lying about that xavier no would you guess that there were hundreds Yes. Less than 500? Uh, less, a little, yes. Less than 500. But about 100 or less than 100? About 100. Okay. About 100. Okay, so about 100 mopeds with no license plates are swarming around us. I want you to picture this, guys. 100, 100 mopeds, no license plates, are just swarming around Heather and Xavier in a sea. And then... And law enforcement pulls over who? I don't know how you could get pulled over in a sea of mopeds swarming you. Us. So Xavier and I are... The police walk through the sea of mopeds and say, hey, you guys. Walking down the street, not even in the forest preserve, pushing our carts on the side of the road with all of our luggage, and we are attacked again, verbally, harassed, lights shined in our face, while a hundred unmarked, unregistered, non-licensed motorbikes, not designated for use on the street, swarm all around us. I mean, <laughs> I think you mean because they're not, they don't have license plates, but every moped is like, it's a moped, right? Unless you're just making a moped in your garage. I don't think it's street legal, but like, what? Xavier and I are attacked again by police shining their light in our face, harassing us. And those are two of about, I guess, 40 or 50 incidences of being harassed or physically assaulted by people dressed in law enforcement offices with keys. <laughs> dressed in law enforcement offices. I To the lockup. So I call them fake cops. They have keys to cars and keys to the actual lockup. And they took me there, held me against my will, broke my cart, threw our stuff all over the floor. So I want you guys to take that in for a second too. So these are fake cops, but they have keys to the cop cars and the lockups. I wonder how the fuck they got those. And when I was released uh, an hour later with no charges, go figure, and refused lawyer and refused medical. So this video was uploaded yesterday? Yesterday, the day before, I can't remember to be honest at this point. Um, but this was from Wednesday. Like she was supposed to upload it on Wednesday and then it just never uploaded. I thought maybe she scrapped the video, but it just took a really long time, apparently. And when I was finally released, they had all of my luggages dumped out in a big pile in the corner of the parking lot with one of the wheels broken off of my luggage cart. They were like, there must be drugs in this one wheel here. Search. Didn't offer to replace it. Didn't say sorry. Nothing. Did absolutely nothing. I immediately call my lawyer who says we have a case. As soon as he says we have a case, someone impersonating my lawyer calls right back and says, well, Heather, I don't think there's much we can do here. You literally just less than five minutes later said, we have another case. What do you mean you don't think there's much we can do here? So I've called all of these resources. None of them accept anyone that does not go through 311. They claim that it's the city's rule that any and all homeless people must be itemized or cataloged or intaked through 311's department. Yet 311 has not picked up a person since 2021. And that came from Xavier. Maybe you're just going about this wrong, completely wrong. Maybe you just need to be in denial of being homeless like James is because James is like, I'm not homeless. <laughs> and then maybe you could approach this a different way. You know, you get all of a sudden all these opportunities open up for you because you're not homeless anymore. 
your tent is your home now, Heather. And you just got to like, you just got to get a job, to be honest. You'll find, like I said, go work in the recycling factory. Do you recall when we were told that two days ago? Yes. And where did they tell us that two days ago? Uh, Northwestern. Northwestern Hospital. And what was the title of the person who told us that? Lead social work. It wasn't the psychiatrist. It was a social worker. social worker. So the social worker at Northwestern comes out, hands us all of this paperwork, tells us that no one from 311, which I already knew, uh, or no one has been <laughs> You're like fully just facing a Whitmer at this point now. Able to utilize 311 since 2021. Okay. So we are now going on. I have covered every fucking base about 35,000 times. I have done everything in my power to document, to be accurate and report on everything that has taken place. And I'm still not in receipt of any victim services, being held separate from my three children, being prevented from earning my own income and being faced on a daily basis with beg people for money, sleep on the side of the road or abandon my physical bodily health and mental health, which I will not do. A dub. Does she look mentally and physically healthy to you guys? I don't know. I feel like I've been too mean this week. So I'm, I'm just going to say she might have let it slip a bit. Now, back to this. We have all of this bullshit that says Chicago cares. Go to the library. Xavier, the library. Do you want to tell them what happened the last several times we've attempted to go to the library besides the, the men who were forwardly consuming pornographic content at a public library, which is a place for children. Let's just keep it real. <laughs> that, that the public library is a place for children. Let's keep it real here. Who and someone was watching apparently porn at the library. That's no good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. She's uh, taking care of her mental health. <laughs> Her ring finger is about to pop. Oh my god! I I forgot. I'm like kind of. I don't know. My eyes just kind of haze over things from now on. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I don't know. She's gonna have to get it amputated. It's not a place for you, fucking criminals who have escaped your fucking sentencing. It's not a place for you, you people who have been oppressed and wrongfully accused. Can we get a? who are interested in jacking off in public. It's not a place for you people who feel misunderstood. And it is a place for children and members of the community. Why are you pointing at Xavier and doing the hand motion at him as if he's the problem? Who need to use a computer to do work, to access resources paid for by the people who have paid taxes for the city of Chicago. Yeah, but you don't pay the taxes for the city of Chicago. So technically, like those perverts in the library that are using the public resources that they paid for. I mean, like, I agree. They shouldn't be looking at porn. I'm pretty sure the library would block porn sites. If not, like, where, who the fuck is your IT department? Uh, Chicago Public Library. If you are caught looking at porn, you should be removed. That's not the case. These people are permitted to watch porn. They sit there all fucking day long like it is a prison watching porn. It is disgusting. Incredibly difficult to get any work done. And that's one of the bare minimum, you know, things that they do there. What has happened, even when we ignore the fact that there are people there watching porn and attempt to go there and use utilize the 10 free prints? Because Chicago has been offering 10 free prints, every library card number or... And that's why I don't think she would have faked it because she needs those prints to print off her super freaking long narrative. Her uh, computer visit. And I have been typing up my narrative, which briefly, uh, you know, describes what I've been through and gives links to all of my social media where I have all of the live feeds, all of the pre recorded feeds, et cetera, and so forth. Now, what happened the last time we went to the library, Xavier? Um, we took the card up. Uh, Harrison, no, not the Harrison, uh, the Ida B. Wells location. We took our cart up to the third floor. What they, did they say? Were they we allowed me, to stay? They, they told they, me I couldn't... Let him finish his story, Heather. Also, that's a very good point, Mud Pit. They would be having sex in public, technically, because they're fucking homeless. Where else can they have sex? I know there was this crazy video I saw where they're in an Airbnb, I think, 
um after the twins thing happened and they were all drunk and in accents and it was mess but so i asked maybe before it was a airbnbs but now yeah it'd be just out in public to go to the computers and i needed to stay with the cards they told us that we were not allowed to be in the library computer. first they said that i could use a computer well no okay let xavier say it because it sounds like it just you needed one person to be by the cart the other person could have went in the library and printed off the forms so why why can't you separate? Why are you so codependent on each other that you can't go into a fucking library? It's a library. I'd have to assume the library is one of the most safer places, right? Am I crazy? Are libraries really dangerous nowadays in the 2020s? Computer and he needed to stand with the cart. Then they said no, that the cart was too large and could not be in the library. Have you seen that library? That library is a massive fucking building. There are not a lot of people in it. We have a luggage cart with luggage. We're not toting guns. So they said we could not be in the library because we have a luggage cart. Where can you leave a luggage cart? A storage. Good example. What happened at our last storage, Xavier? Um, what happened after the day after I paid? We went to enter the code to access. And what did it say? He's looking at his notes, guys. He's like. Fuck, I know I have this from down somewhere. Or he's just searching his brain. Oh, fuck, dude. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this was in the AM or the PM. But yeah, if it was the AM, could you guys imagine waking up to like, this is the first thing you hear when you wake up. You roll over, get your like little nitrous balloon and your fucking weed. And you're just trying to get high because you're fucking homeless and life sucks. And then you got Heather Gillespie going on a rant for a video in court that would definitely incriminate the fuck out of you guys and not do you any favors. So I don't know if Xavier had any balls, he'd be like, turn the fucking camera off so we can actually get help. So people can stop. I don't know if there is anyone hindering them. It's because they're putting all this publicly out there and they obviously have haters and I'm a nice guy. I just like to laugh at them, but like, uh, there, I'm sure there are other people who are actually trying to fuck with their shit. There's other Congress out there. Trust me. Denied. So after paying $74 for a storage locker, they stole the $74 and denied our access. I waited for 9 a.m. to come so that I could access through the front door, went to the office. They said the same thing, that, uh, that there was no problem, um, that our code should not be denied. Someone called me again, posing as someone from this company safe store, calling me a crackhead and a bitch and saying that I could not go there anymore. I removed everything from the locker and walked out. I, in writing, requested a refund. We were one day into the month that I had already paid. To this day, they have still kept every penny and not refunded it. So they revoked. Sounds like you caused them a lot of problems. And you probably signed something that said, I don't get a refund if I sleep and do drugs in the storage unit. My access to the storage for no reason, slandered my name, libeled me. It's always for no reason. She must be the most unlucky person on the planet to have all these things happen to her. But no reason. Harassed me, called my personal cell phone and called me a, a crackhead among other names. And even though the office was saying there was no problem with my access, entering my access code didn't work. And the person who sold me the access in the first place, Jermaine, who definitely is a crackhead, missing teeth and all. Did you buy a storage unit from a crackhead and expect everything to be kosher? <laughs> okay was on my cell phone calling me no wonder they're not giving you a fucking refund yeah crack and i don't know the man other than from the day i opened the account the day i opened this the safe store is the only time i've ever met him or seen him in my life and i've never smoked crack so they robbed us at our storage locker <laughs> stole the money and i i just emptied everything and we've been literally pulling it around with us in a cart ever since yeah Danielle, uh, Stacy was in chat earlier. Um, she was informing us about important things, but uh, no, if she ever wanted to do an interview or call in or anything, I'd be open to that. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be cool. 
We then even attempted to get a new storage locker at the U-Haul down the street, and they did the same thing. I paid in full, and they revoked access the very first night. Did not offer a refund, and I had to get one of the neighboring you know, people to open up their, their door and let us use the elevator so that I could empty all of our belongings out and take them off of the, the premises. They both owe me a full refund. Neither of them have explained why they did that or what was their reasoning. I have not violated any of the terms of my lease agreements for any of the storage lockers. So we are quite literally being oppressed. There is nowhere for us to put our belongings. We're being forced outside on the side of the fucking street. I've paid for storage and the money's been stolen. Both of our link cards have been skimmed almost every month. We, I run. The second of the month when he gets his, I run to, to the suburbs and to the northwest side to bring my children one bag of snacks and food each before the link card starts getting stolen. I handled all of our Airbnb for the entire year last year. Xavier's agreement to pay me back has been cut short because his father has been going through whatever he's been going through. Not interested in giving his drug addict son and his homeless fucking girlfriend that's pregnant any more money than they absolutely need for essentials because you will spend it on a bunch of drugs and unnecessary junk. And stopped making regular payments in February. I've not received a regular payment to repay me since February. He gives them $60 here, $100 there, and Xavier usually gives me half. But that link card money of buying groceries and dropping it off to my children, that has been what I've been accepting in place of cash. We also share my link card benefit for food, and I make sure that he eats and he makes sure that I eat. Everything we get, we share. So can you please stop smoking pot and flicking the fucking Bic while I'm making a video that I'd like them to play in court? I, I like I said, <laughs> don't play this video in court, Heather. I hope you don't. I mean, maybe you should. Like, I'd love to see the court's reaction to it. Please. It's like you're a 39-year-old man. Sometimes you show up. And you're there and you know how to communicate. You're respectful. Other times you're a fucking sabotage. Uh, Xavier, stop being a sabotage, flicking the bick and smoking your weed. Like this. What changes from day to day? Are you using drugs? Um, I mean, the fact that you pointed out his drug use already in this sitting here and other instances. Yeah, of course it does drugs. What? Is someone standing on your neck? You guys heard that? He's like, yeah. Someone is standing on the deck. I think it's fucking Heather. Like, okay. You just said you're going to want to play this fucking video in court. You're asking him now if he's on drugs. Why the fuck would he answer at all? So he didn't. And then it's like, someone's standing on your neck. Yeah, it's you. No one else is around. Okay, so Xavier's being extorted or <laughs> manipulated, in other words. He is not being permitted to be sober and honest. Someone has, and that's... Stop being permitted to be... <laughs> Someone's making him do drugs. The kill team I always tell you guys about. Some sort of stock... The fucking kill team, bro. ...in sabotaging me, probably because there are so many fucking lawsuits on the table right now that people are desperate to discredit me. Um, Xavier doesn't usually do disrespectful things like this. Like I said before, he's a 39 year old man. Um, he knows how to act. I don't. I don't doubt the fact that he is being, you know, extorted in some way. Um, I, I actually believe that there have been a several older, scary looking gentlemen who have come around and made threats, um, direct or indirect. Uh, I don't think we're safe. I don't feel safe, and I haven't felt safe this entire time. This entire time. Um, now back to this. This is what we've been provided by social work. I am six months pregnant. I have not been provided any sort of options for housing. I am. Is that the sun up there? Oh, wait, no. I think she said she had to turn on. I think that's the flashlight. So, yeah. Spooky times. Completely able to work. I have a bachelor's degree. I have several years experience at Northwestern Hospital and many other hospitals. I've worked in the nightlife industry promoting parties. I've worked in pretty much every industry that there is sales and marketing. I was selling renewable energy for a short period. Um, I need to be, you know, given options. And those options need to be more than find a place to hide in your tent. I've done nothing wrong. I don't owe anyone any explanation. And I'm tired of providing voluntarily an explanation in hopes of not being harassed that day. This is not the world that I want to exist in. This is not the world that anyone should exist in.
this is illegal. This is unlawful. I mean, I've heard that Xavier was on drugs already before, and he was, she like met him on the street. Like he was already on the street, but he's, <laughs> he also said that he was sent by God and that his brother's the DA. Um, and that he also legalized weed in Illinois because he wrote fucking Hunter Biden an email or something. And then a week later it got legalized. <laughs> and then, he's like, I know that they read it because uh, they put my birthday in the bill. Okay, Xavier. Xavier is pretty crazy himself. I just wish we could hear him talk more. It's just Heather's yippity yapping in all the fucking time. I hope Heather gets lost one day and just like leaves her phone with uh, Xavier and he's just on live stream being like, I need your guys' help to find Heather. Like, she, uh, she's gone. I don't know where she is. <laughs> like, we can actually help him. We could become friends. You know what I'm saying? There's so many ways. Like, there's so many twists and turns the show could go in. And this is harassment. The fact that I have paid into the tax system my entire life, and now the only assistance I can receive is harassment from people who take home a paycheck to keep me safe, it's disgusting. I, I cannot say enough how disgusting it is. Um, then they give us these single room occupancy buildings, call for availability. So look at the fucking price. $700 a month and you have to share a bathroom. It's 700 is cheap as fuck, bro. If I could pay 700 for anything. Oh my God. Oh my God. I would love it. It's one bedroom. Get the fuck out of here. You can get. You get the fuck out of here. How much do you think a bedroom is worth nowadays in 2023, Heather? Get private listings of studio apartments and one bedroom apartments for five, six, seven hundred dollars. Then go and get those. Not everyone is downtown. Okay. Get out of the downtown area and call around. I promise you, people are charging seven to nine hundred dollars for one bedroom apartments rent in the near west suburbs, not too far from the city, 20 minutes from the city. Should I move to Chicago, guys? I heard Chicago has like the highest uh, murder rate or something. But I mean, Heather's made it this far. Maybe I should go live in Chicago. Chicago. I'd be tempted to go see Heather and Xavier, though. Mm, I don't know if it's worth it. Okay, it is a fucking ripoff what's going on here. Now you look at this. This is the last one they gave us. Family planning and pregnancy. Don't need it. I have four. I have three children. Uh, I know what to do with my baby. I just need a safe place to live. Financial stability. Catholic charities. It's just a repeat. It doesn't exist. Inner Voice Chicago called, left a message, no answer. All of the rest of these. And look, I write down the dates, the times. 1023, 348, Northwestern Hospital, currently waiting for prenatal doctor to explain notes. Your notes don't mean anything because you could write whatever the fuck you feel like writing. That's not going to be proof of anything. Louisiana, a two bedroom is only 580. What? Really? Really? I'm, I might, I'm actually tempted. What the fuck? So then the two doctors who saw me and evaluated me and clearly could see there was no psych issue at all. They had a question as to why the doctor from Prentice ordered a psych consult. And they asked us, me, Xavier, did those doctors say that that woman was unjustified in ordering the psych consult and that it seemed like she had a, a, a nefarious agenda? And did they not ask us to sit down on a stretcher and wait while they went to retrieve her so they could, quote, close the loop on why she was leaving those notes in my medical record? I mean, it just sounds like they wanted to clarify yeah, why they did it. And I'm assuming that when they did reach out to her, she's like, yeah, because she's fucking crazy for these reasons. Um, and you just want Xavier as a witness because you think it's going to help you or something. Yes. Okay. So now I have two doctors as witnesses who can confirm that there is no psych issue, that there are nefarious doctors noting in my legal medical record false statements as to my psychiatric health. I want to fucking press charges against all of these people. I don't think you can. <laughs> Look at this face. Oh, she's revving up. She's gonna, she's gonna get crazy, guys. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Um, that is crazy, though. 2600 2600 for a one-bedroom? I'm paying, like, 
fifteen seventy five for a two bedroom right now. So yeah, no, that five eighty. The like I said, even seven hundred, bro. If I seven hundred, sign me up. I'm there. I'm there. What are you waiting for? What more do I need to do? What more can I do? I'm about to give birth in three months. You can't bring a baby to a tent. I need newborn clothes. I need blankets, bottles. I need time to buy those things. Christmas is in two months. I've never missed a Christmas or a birthday for any of my children. I am going to press X to that on that one. What am I going to do? I could barely walk around now. We can't leave our belongings anywhere. We're being denied our right to storage, even with payment. What the fuck am I supposed to do? And none of you have an answer. But you keep on allowing the unknown and restricted calls to come through on my Google Voice account and call me a fat lying bitch. And I don't think she realizes who she's talking to. <laughs> like, who is this video for, Heather? Because you're talking to they, they, the the people she's like, they're you're making this happen. You're making that happen. This is an audience on YouTube. You uploaded this to YouTube, Heather. The audience on YouTube is not the people that are restricting your Google voice calls to only receive harassing messages or whatever. And N I G G E R. I'm clearly not even black, but okay, racist. I'm clearly not even black. So why would you be racist to me? What are you talking about, Heather? What are you even talking about right now? What the fuck? Yeah, what? Like, and this is not one or two calls. These people have been doing this for going on four years. Four years. How many online police reports and in-person police reports must be filed? And police just keep telling me all we can advise you to do is to just keep documenting it. Well, you know what? No one paid. Document it better is what I'd imagine they're saying. You know how like right now you're just writing a big long book and you don't have any actual evidence of any of these things happening, even though you have like multiple phones because you keep selling them at the, what is that? The recycle your phone thing. Um, you should have some better evidence. Pays me to just keep documenting it. And I'm pretty sure if I have to run for my life, because I'm being stalked and followed, that there's a fucking problem here. A problem that entitles me to assistance from law enforcement. None of these resources work. We've called them all numerous times. They're not real. I don't know what you people want from me. I'm about to have a baby. My children are growing. My youngest is 10. She was six when all of this began. My oldest is 17. She was 13 when all of this began. She's going to graduate this year. My son started high school. My oldest got her period. My youngest. Well, I don't need to know all this. It's almost over, though, guys. This is going to be one more minute. And then. And then I don't know. There is another one she did today. She did a live stream today. But like we could just save that for Friday. I don't know how many more of these fucking live streams she's going to do. She does a lot. You know what? We could just do it. I mean, like I'm not tired or anything. I ate right before this. And if you guys are if you guys are bumping, I'll bump with <laughs> what the fuck that means. Um, but she did do another live from today. If you guys want to watch that when she finishes up here, let me know in chat started regular all day classes they need their mother you know four birthdays of theirs have passed but their mother has only been able to pass by and drop off a birthday gift that's unacceptable i need my children my children need their mother i need my life back i don't know what you people want from me i am not interested in continuing this i do not want to work with your nefarious fucking purposes i will not be your witness i want to press charges against everyone involved i have been raped i have been stabbed i have been bludgeoned i want civil lawsuits all around if you want to charge me with something please by all means come and lock me up i'm at the underpass under Lincoln Park, I will accept whatever fucking fucked up ass charges you say I have after a court date, after a trial, because I can prove every fucking where I've been. <laughs> I bet you can, but it's not going to help you. I have forensic accounting, debit card purchases, link card purchases, witnesses, videos, hospital visits, doctor's notes. What do you have? Nothing but fucking lies. And in the words of Kevin Gates, the truth.
cannot stand next to a lie because it will always be exposed. Who the fuck's Kevin Gates? Who is Kevin Gates? You guys want to find out who Kevin Gates is with me? I'm I'm curious. Oopsies. If I can spell. Find out. Oh, he's an American rapper and singer? On well, the words of Kevin Gates, guys. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let me get this other one pulled up for us. Da, 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 da. This is it. So this one's apparently juicy as well. Um, ooh, I can do the sniper wolf uh, setting. Hold on. Um, ba -bum 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 -bum. I'm going to have to do that. And then hold on, actually. I'm going to switch this, pop this over vertical. And then I should be able to. Eh. All right. While I'm setting this up, no, oh, I'm just going to do that thing that it likes doing. All right, let me close that off. Um, while I'm getting this set up, I'm going to actually, we'll take a quick, quick break. Um, I'll play some music for us. We'll do a smoke break while I get this other one set up here. And I'm going to go smoke real quick as well. Um, and yeah, we'll keep this going. Do that. And there's some. Okay. Crazy today. Okay. Um, 
So it should work now if I do this. Aha. Will it let me get rid of those black bars on the side? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Okay, everything's working. Everything's good. Let's get the smoke break off. All right. <clears throat> so I haven't watched this one at all. Not one bit. Haven't had a chance to. So this will be fresh for me as it is for you. If you haven't seen it already, this was from her Instagram today. Uh, she did it. When did she do it? Well, she did it today. I just don't remember what time today. Um, sometime. So let's uh, get right into the news. What's up, you guys? Where can you find what skill? Why is this not working now? Oh, okay, now it is. <laughs> Where can you find what? My pumpkin's out. Uh-oh. Wait, are they both out? They're both out. All right, let me fix that. Right, yeah. So we are now heading into our... I want to have time to fix it. Pregnancy. Um, it's just one baby this time for those of you who have been with me for this entire crazy um, time period where I was literally um a mother of three children living in my own home minding my own business literally minding and running my own businesses um to a pregnant terrified incredibly abused and oppressed woman um to what i am now which is uh half numb half strong um mother who is displaced um, and desperately seeking answers to wh what could have caused this and what continues to allow it to continue. Um, I probably could have just let that play. I was waiting to see if she'd give me anything to work with. But yeah, I'll go get these, uh, these lit up here. If we're starting at the beginning, what kind of business have I done? Every kind. Um, so I've worked in hospitality. I've worked in staffing. I've worked in event planning. I've worked in promotions. Um, my longest w2 type of job was in the hospital system working with northwestern hospital um seeing alexis alexian brothers and affiliates um affiliates of northwestern northwestern uh started out in private practice as chicago lakeshore medical associates which was uh, an independent physician's office of about anywhere from 20 to 40 physicians at any given time um at the 676 building the same St. Clair, uh, 676 North St. Clair Arcus Pavilion. Um, and I was there for approximately five years before they got purchased by NMFF, Northwestern Medical Faculty Foundation. Um, and then ultimately, I believe they got purchased by Northwestern Medical Physicians Group or Northwestern Physicians Group. Uh, and Northwestern basically took over. Um, you know, they, they acquired or purchased the independent physician's offices in the area um, and really kind of just took over that space. Um, after leaving the medical field, I went into sales and marketing um, in the optical field. Uh, I was there for a short time, six months to a year, um, while also working out obsessively, prepping to compete on PC with a personal trainer and a prep coach. Um, my trainer was Manny uh, of Export, and my prep coach was Christian McCoy, um, who would travel around training people in various states and places. Um, I saw myself go from 70 pounds of like soft fat to like under 20% body fat um, in about six months, I'd say, um, which is dramatic but you have to be super committed and dedicated to that. So my schedule looked something like I would wake up my three children um, or my oldest, tell her that I was going to the gym, that she had one more hour to sleep. All right, so she was just going on about medical nonsense. The candles or the, yeah, the candles and the pumpkins are lit now. And okay, I'm good. Everything's like, I'm really off my game today. I'm 
sorry. Um, it took me forever to get everything set up. I didn't prep for the James thing. Um, my shit's going out, but we're good now. Um, and now she's going on about her kids, like getting her kids up and ready for school that she doesn't do. For an hour and a half, just leave. We lived in the basement of my ex-husband, Orlando, not really marriage husband, but the father of my child. Uh, we lived in the basement of his grandmother's house. So early in the morning while everyone was still sleeping, um, she would be there. There wasn't even a lock on the door going up and down, um, but it was like an apartment in that I had my own kitchen, living room, two bedrooms. Um, there was a laundry room, but I couldn't really use it. I would sneak sometimes and use it if there was an emergency. But for the most part, I used a laundry emergency. Why couldn't you use the laundry machine? The laundry mat. Um, and so my life was not easy. Uh, being three children, working full time, waking my oldest, who was 12 at the time, and telling her if there's a problem, get Mama Nelly, I'll be back in an hour. And then going to the gym for my first round of training, coming back home, eating breakfast, waking up the kids, getting them dressed, sending them off to school with a cereal bar. Or Why is she even telling all this? Like, wow, why, why is this relevant? It's not relevant. Um, is it to make her look like she's obviously a good parent, but she's not? Like, quit living in the past, Heather. You're in a tent now. You gotta get the fuck out of this tent. What are you gonna do? Or, you know, a donut and some- Gary V would be so disappointed in you right now. Some chocolate milk, um, or whatever they wanted, fruit, whatever. Or, you know, just barely making it home from the gym with enough time to say, oh my God, everyone hurry up and get up. Um, they went off to school. I went back to the gym for my cardio session um, and did religiously like it was my job, 45 minutes on the stairs in his own shoe, um, which for me was a level five or six because I was coached into believing that keeping your heart rate into his own shoe is optimal for burning fat while also building muscle. I don't know what these zones are. What's zone two? What's, what's zone five? She said zone five before, right? Um, I would drink BCAs and protein. I would eat five very, very specific meals each day. Um, and six months of that is what brought me to the point where I was. And I don't even feel I was nearly close uh, enough to competing as uh, most people would imagine. So it's definitely a very rough lifestyle. I would take my meals in a six pack bag to my job. Um, and then I would go back home and my children would get dropped off around five. Uh, if I if it was one of my late nights at work, they would get dropped off at the actual eye eye doctor that I worked at, um, and then I would spend three days a week off because we were off Mondays uh, with my children. You know, just hanging out or going to the park or museums or the zoo or you know whatever. Clean. Yeah, I don't think a twelve year old should be left alone. How about they for other kids? I don't know all the ages of your kids. I, I try not to even pay too much attention to it because it's not. We don't need to know that. Like she just divulges too much information at times, right? And I try to focus on the things. But no, that is a good point. Like she for the gym of all things, it's not like there's no food in the house or whatever. If we, if I don't pay the fucking heating bill in person, then the heat's going to get shut off. We're all going to die. Like it was like, I want to look good. All right. So I'm going to leave the 12 year old in charge. Like I'll live the ways at the gym. Cleaning my house, reorganizing or rearranging the furniture in my home, uh, et cetera. And so forth. Uh, I always did my That's best so to be the mom that listened to her kids and gave her kids an opinion. What do you want to eat? What do you want to do? What do you want to, you know, watch? Um, while also trying to be as healthy as possible on a very, very tight budget. Um, I would get, you know, a little bit of wiggle room around income tax time. But other than that, I was paycheck to paycheck. Um, and I was working, as I said, with bachelor's degree credits uh, more credits than a bachelor's degree requires and numerous outside certifications. Of Why is she rocking back and forth like a, like she's on something more than weed? I'm on weed right now. I'm not rocking back and forth on that now because it's kind of fun now that I try it, but it's just a chair. I'm not like on the ground, something like that. And I wasn't doing it before I saw Heather do it and realized how fun it is, but I probably stopped because I'll get dizzy. No, I'm probably not dizzy, but you know, but medical phlebotomy, um, personal training, just various relevant courses to my field. 
Um, I went back to school after attending two community colleges and transferred to AIU, American Intercontinental University, with three small children. Um, transferred my major I, from swing. nursing due to not being that. able to go to in-school clinicals or on-campus clinicals, which means that you work for free and work a full-time job while supporting three small children. So I um, I um, worked as much as I possibly could while also doing homework and being a present available mother for my children. Um, with my third pregnancy, Alexis, so I have Viviana as my oldest, Louis is the middle and Alexis is the baby. She's 10, the oldest is 17 and my son is 15. Yeah, it's just something I didn't see her do before. I don't remember her rocking back and forth usually. Um, what are you doing, computer? My computer is being mean. Um, I almost died. Uh, I had Alexis and I noticed immediately after I gave birth to her, she was an induction because uh, she was two weeks late and I was on a Pitocin drip. And I had read a lot about some of the potential downfalls of using Pitocin to induce pregnancy. Um, one of them was a possibility, an increased possibility for placental abruption. And as soon as I gave birth to her, I knew I had a placental abruption. I looked at my doctor uh, out of Elmhurst Hospital, Dr. Martinez, and I said to him, I, that's an abrupted placenta. And he was like, no, 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 everything's fine. And I'm like, I look at Orlando and I look at him and I look at the placenta. I'm like, are you sure? Because I have two other children and the placenta doesn't look like that. You know, the placenta comes out intact. It almost looks like how they teach you a kidney looks, you know? Why do we need to listen to her describe this? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't even know if what she's saying is true, but God dang. Um, and it's like enclosed in this kind of like tissue. So I, I knew mine was in pieces all over and, and ruptured. And I knew that there was a, an increased amount of danger because when you retain placental fluid, you need to have a surgery to remove it. If you don't, your body begins to, as it deteriorates and dies inside of you, your body begins to attack it as a foreign substance in your body. And how does our body empty itself of foreign substances? An increase in mucus, an increase in saliva, an increase in blood, bleeding, et cetera, and so forth. Our body fluids in et cetera, and so forth. I don't know if these are true facts or not. I'm not a doctor. Increase so that we can void whatever it is that our body is rejecting. Um, so two weeks almost, or maybe three, I hadn't, I returned to Northwestern three days after I got home from the late postpartum hemorrhage. Um, but Alexis is born. The next day I find out Viviana and Lewis have chicken pox and they came to see her on the day she was born. They got to hold her. And then my ex Lewis's mom goes, oh my God, los dos niños ya tienen chicken pox. It's I'm assuming that someone has chicken pox. I don't know why she's speaking Spanish now. I don't, I don't speak this language. It is Spanish, right? Why is she speaking Spanish to us now? Bien, tú tienes que, you know, to rest. You just had a baby. So I Can someone tell me what the fuck she said? I know you're worried, but just don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to take care of them. That was my mother-in-law, Consuelo. Um, and my mother-in-law and, and father-in-law were always very hands-on with the children and the fact that I had no car and I lived in Chicago and they would drive without complaining every single day to pick them up and take them to school for me and then drop them back off to me. Um, so I never, ever, ever like tripped out on my ex, Lewis, their father, um, to do more because as I said before, people can only do what they can do. And Lewis has circumstances and situational circumstances that have not allowed him to get a job that pays him much more than minimum wage. So if he can support my children when they're there with him and his parents, whether they help or not, you know, it's none of my business. But if they can support them while they're over there, I have no right to complain about it or take him to court or do anything like that because I'm supporting them when they're with me. Why would I ask him to continue supporting them, you know, when he can barely do it? If he's living in abundance, it's it's a different story. I don't know. I got kind of lost there for a second. I was reading your guys' comments. But James, there's going to be a James stream tomorrow, a spooky James stream, where he went on a haunted hotel tour and he wigged himself out. And it was very scary. Um, it was supposed to be tonight, but 
this was this is easier to prep <laughs> so uh but yeah tomorrow and then there's going to be the halloween costume contest uh you should i think i put the link in the description of this you should check that out if you see your wife struggling or, or the mother of your child struggling and you're living in abundance then you absolutely you know need to pay more money um but that wasn't the case for me so i'm working full time i have these children who I love so much. I'm full-time in school and I realized that I cannot get a nursing. I don't think Heather pays child support. No, probably not. Agree, unless I'm able to complete clinical. So I transferred my major to um, new business development and healthcare administration, law and ethics. I graduated a course called First Institute which was solely focused on billing, coding, and morals and ethics. It was a nine month program dedicated to three individual trimesters, three months with coding, three months with billing, three months with medical law and ethics. On top of that, you add in the, the four years of community college and then university, all with healthcare administrative majors. That puts me in a pretty good- She didn't finish any of those. I pressed the wrong button. Spacebar does that? When I'm over here, it just puts up the last thing. That's interesting. I'm learning, guys. Um, no, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, you didn't finish any of these. She doesn't have any degrees. So she's just listening out for what? The million certificates? That that made my brain itch a bit when she did that one. That was crazy. Spot to be able to get shit done at Northwestern or for any you know, medical conglomerate. At Northwestern, I was hired one week prior to the merger of um, Medicare, or maybe not merger, but to Medicare or the government becoming contractually involved in monitoring electronic medical records. What do I mean by that? Prior, so prior to the day that I started, there was there were very few doctors who had made the switch over to EMR, electronic medical record. Most people in their offices were running paper, standard paper charts, which you can get chart notes anywhere. They're very basic. They ask patient vital, uh, patient vitals are at the top, patient demographics are above that. Um, and then the problem list, and it's like, uh, you know, you triage the patient. Head, ear, eyes, nose, throat, review of systems is what that's called. Um, chief complaint, um, progress, um, wait, I think it's progress, uh, surgical history, past medical history, and they're all abbreviated usually, HX for history. Um, what else? What else would there be? Uh, medications, problem list, review of systems, vitals, whatever. So all of the same thing that was on the paper, it, it was being now monitored by the government and needed to be, go into a computer system. There were numerous computer systems on the market, um, and doctors had a little bit of freedom in choosing which one they wanted to go with. Um, but when you work with Northwestern, you have zero control at all over your practice, um, you know, and that's any single medical facility. Once you become a doctor. Is impromptu a word? It is a word, right? Am I making up words in my brain? I swear to God, it was a word. You are not for one of those facilities. You don't get to say, well, I don't like this EMR. Let's switch. You know, you could say it, but they're probably not going to listen. They have their administration. No, probably not. You're right. So once it becomes this like business thing where the owner is no longer concerned for business and bedside manner, but business is business and bedside manner is bedside manner, it's, it's very tricky. You know, it's very, very tricky. So the doctors get um, Athena is what they ended up going with, but we still had Epic access. If you know anything, if you're from the medical um, kind of industry, you understand what I'm talking about. Epic is a, an inpatient program. That's how I was spelling it and my canadian keyboard was like it's not a word so i was trying to spell it a whole bunch of different ways and i thought i went crazy and made up a word in my head so thank you um i don't know what's wrong with the keyboard it has more um in my opinion benefit for larger hospital systems than athena athena was almost like playing a video game it was so user-friendly and easy to use um, I would recommend it for any small office. It's v extremely customizable. Um, it was just a very, very good program, very easy to learn. So I get hired at Northwestern to work with one doctor. 
and she was an endocrinologist or is an endocrinologist, really cool lady, not too much older than me, um, by the book, but not uptight, you know, just a cool person to work with. I was, I, that, that was probably the best actor I could have gotten. Uh, could not be more grateful for the time that I spent with her. She would listen to me. She was just a, a really good mentor to me. She would hear me and understand me and give me feedback that was not biased and very factual in a way that I always wished I could have received from my parents. Um, but they either didn't understand what I was asking or were too compassionate or empathetic to the situation to give me a response that was not, you know, not, not from a place of bias. There's a lot of word salad and boring stories from her. Maybe she gets crazier. It's an interesting, she got a wolf shirt on today. So I was really grateful. Oh, and also like what? I don't know how to curl. My uh, grandfather knew how to curl for that relationship but it was not long after i accepted the position with her that a whole bunch of assistants started getting fired and they're like well we need you to take another doctor you know and help this other doctor temporarily well do you think you can handle taking two more doctors temporarily but they have a clinical nurse so you'll still have work but she helps with the admin part and i'm i'm hired on a negotiated rate to work as an assistant admin for well, the, the only admin for my doctor, um, but as an assistant, clinical, I did injections, I did triage, I did diabetic education, as well as administrative. And How is her telling the story helping anything at all either? It's very weird that she's just reminiscing on, according to her, terrible things that have happened to her. And that was... Like, what's that going to do for you? What does that help anything? The rate that I negotiated for per hour for my work, to work with that one doctor. But within the first month or two, I had already taken on five more doctors. And most of the assistants there were not cross-trained, clinical and administrative. They were simply one or the other. So the way it works is there's a lab and then there's the administrative portion of the office. And then there's the back office, which is clinical. The lab is clinical. The exam rooms are clinical. Our pods or offices or workspaces um, whatever, whatever we had, as well as that of the doctors were administrative. So that's kind of the separation. You're going to find what's the difference. You're going to find pens and staples in one space. You're going to find needles and biohazard, you know, equipment in another space. Can't cross contaminate the pencils and the bio needles. I, I am lost too, guys. Though. I have, uh, this is a very weird thing. I should have, should of, should of. It's yeah. I mean, does it like, is that what the captions do? Should because it should be should with a V and an E because should have right and it's like abbreviated. Um, but I could see like if it's auto transcribing, it, do it should of. Um, and so we, I was working all over the place, and I was doing so much, and I was doing great. I never got in trouble. I never got, you know, told that I was doing something wrong. I don't remember being reprimanded. Um, I started having emergencies as soon as I got there. There were all right. Well, I know a little bit about this. Um, BCG told me that she got reprimanded for calling someone a dyke, uh, and then was like, "But she said that I could call her a dyke." Which is that? Is that what? Like, I don't think the LGBT community appreciates that word. Or uh, is it okay for me to say that? I can't say the F word. I know people get mad at that. Um, can I say dyke? I mean, I've said it like four times now. I guess we're already too far in the weeds at this point. Um, I won't say anything. I'm more <laughs> sorry. But like, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. Were numerous fires that needed and required my attention within the first three months. But my manager was really, really understanding and cool about it. And I somehow made it through that probationary period. And never got another reprimand until the day I walked out. Um, now, when I joined them, they were using paper charts. And all the doctors were filling in these paper charts. After they were done with the paper chart, they would kind of be reviewed by the billers um, because there would be a CPT code along with ICD codes that needed to be submitted to, to their insurance to get you know paid. So the doctors would simply fill in like bubbles. Okay, I did this. It was a level one visit, right? Or level five visits. It's one to five as far as how, how much you can build. So they would submit a level one visit, meaning they spent like 15 minutes with the patient over the phone, didn't do much. And it, you know, it was an established patient that would return like maybe let's just say 50 bucks per visit. But if you have a new patient and you, 
I'm kind of glad we're getting through this now because like it would have been very confusing on Friday enough. Like it would have been a lull in this. You know what I'm saying? Because I got other stuff. We got the stories. I'm sure she'll go live again before Friday. Halloween's gonna happen, and like the attention's not gonna be all about Heather, and she's gonna get all upset. He's spaghetti and be like, something bad's happening to me. That's my prediction, anyways. So um, I'm sure we're gonna have more stuff, and if not, then we can learn more about her past and all like this Eric shit, and uh, I don't know anything else. Maybe we'll see if Aunt Stacy wants to talk to us or something if she doesn't end up posting the rest of this week. But this stream, it's nothing special. <laughs> At least not. Nothing that I've seen yet. Well, how far an hour? Let's check. Um, so we're 18 minutes into an hour. So we got two thirds left for her to pull out some crazy. Um, let's see what she's got. Coded at a level five visit, meaning you spent up to 45 minutes with the patient or your Sprink. staff spent that much time with the patient. Sprinks up. Missed you. How are you? How are we good doing? Uh, there's going to be James Soroka's turn tomorrow. You should do the Halloween costume contest. Sprinks, you could win a prize. Um, it's in the link, the description of this video. As well as they have lab work, as well as this is going to require you to review, you know, how comprehensive the appointment was, as well as they're new rather than established, you'll get paid higher. So the insurance portion and the coding portion is very, very important because we need to code it appropriately to get enough money back to compensate all of the staff in the office, the doctors, the billers and coders, the front office staff, et cetera, and so forth. Um, so I would never really see the charts during those periods. The charts would go, I would pull the charts. I would identify, you know, not much from the information. I would kind of just look over anything that the doctor might need, like a new incoming test result from the last time they saw the patient, and then just put the charts in the doctor's office with a copy of their schedule. Well, literally within the first month, they're like, Medicare passes all this regulation. And they're like, look, we're not paying you guys shit unless you have electronic medical records. And in addition to that, if you don't, they, they straight stood on everyone's neck, the government. They're like, if you don't get these electronic medical records, not only are we not paying you shit, we're going to fine your entire practice. One fine for every single doctor that you have. I'm putting a face mask on. Sorry, guys. I mean, that's more interesting than what you're saying, because it's like, you just like, gobbledygook, blah, 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 blah. So all of a sudden the administration is for, faced and the doctors with this tremendous amount of pressure to take every single chart. <laughs> no, I don't have one doctor anymore. I have five and to Why she have five doctors? Extract the information that we need from the paper chart into the electronic medical record. On top of doing so, we have to learn a completely new software, Athena. On top of that, I was only with them for a month, so I was a baby. I had no idea about Epic. I had just started training on Epic, and I was brand new out of school. None of this means anything to anybody, unless they've actually been in this exact same situation. So it's just like, why, why even get into this much detail? Imagine if I got on here, I started naming off things you guys don't know anything about. Like, oh, I went on Spark, and everything was crazy, and then I couldn't get what I did. You know what I mean? Like, what? Right? So I have three children at home. I'm in school full time. I'm at work while Northwestern is implementing electronic medical records, transferring all the patients for five doctors' caseloads, full time, very busy doctors. I see almost done. I did use CGI to put in the fucking <laughs> internet order into electronic medical records. Somehow I manage, right? I'm still paying rent. I'm still doing everything. Can you stop spraying that at me? It's really hot. No, that. He's what is he spraying at her that's hot? He's spraying hot water, hot air? Spray it like a little bit that way or aim it or whatever. Thank you. What is it? Is he doing drugs at her? You No, keep it on. I need it on. Uh, I think it's the hair dryer. It must be the hair dryer because it's cold outside. Like there can't be anything. I just didn't. Maybe my brain has started tuning, in it, tuning out the hair dryer. But just put it on over there on the cool one. On the cool one. Please. Thank you. So I was very ambitious back then. Like, How about you just don't have the hair dryer on? Like I truly felt like there was nothing I could not accomplish. Like I felt like I got this, like without a problem, I've got it. Um, and within a month of taking on all those doctors, I was immediately telling management, like, look, this cannot be a permanent thing because I do have it, right? I'm, I'm doing it, but it's exhausting me and draining me. And I'm young and intelligent and I can barely keep up. 
So long story short, I ended up staying with all of those doctors and only getting more doctors. They never once took a single doctor away from me. Uh, Wait, you used to be homeless? Oh, wait, hold on, Kenny. I got to read your first comment. I thought you were about to say you used to be homeless for a living. Like you're whatever Heather is doing. So Medicaid doesn't pay. Hold on. It's making me like click over here to click over here. So then I, I, I'm getting mixed up. Silly computer. Tricks are for not me. Uh, Medicaid doesn't pay you for shit either way before EMR. They're basically paying 30 to 40 cents per dollar. I'm glad you're keeping up with what she's talking about. When I don't understand what she means, like if it's not general crazy talk, because I can speak a little crazy, but I can't speak like, I don't know any of this system shit and epic and fucking, uh, what was the other thing she said? <laughs> I don't even remember the things because I'm just like, that's deleted in my brain once it goes in. Not one. I Like I said, I, I got more and more doctors no matter what I did or said. Um, and it became my job to basically teach myself how to be a doctor. Um, and I did so by reviewing every single note that some of the most intelligent doctors I've ever met have left. Um, doctors, you know, who have written things and seen patients for 30, 40 years um, and who know the teachings of medicine from Harvard and Yale and all of these Ivy League schools. Springs, there's going to be a James Soroka stream tomorrow, and I'm trying to set up something with the Paris, like the paradrama people. But every time I go into like Ricky's, I'm pretty much just going to Ricky's. I don't really go into Don Lods. I'm like, I can't really do anything with any of this. Like, I don't know. I just like, guys, you got to go in there and make something interesting, and then I can put it on here, and then we can like do something special. But lately, it's just been kind of. Eh. Yeti was being interested for a bit, but then I don't know where he's at. 40, 50 years ago, you know, and then do doctors as new as the doctor that I worked with, my main doctor, who was fresh out of school as a doctor. And I was her first, We her, her first practice was there with me. Um, so it was very interesting and I loved it and I learned a lot. And you would open up the charts and what, is, what did that entail? Extracting this detailed information. You open up these charts, these paper charts, and you copy down. First of all, doctors cannot write for the most part. It's terrible, their handwriting. So I'll agree with her there. I, <laughs> I've seen, like, it's like a line. And I'm like, what is this supposed to say? Like penicillin. Where the fuck did you get that? So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fall through that. When you're right, you're right. So you first have to figure out how to learn and decode. Once you learn your doctor, you know, and it's like second nature, but you have to decode this writing. And then you have to go through and manually enter every problem this person has ever been diagnosed with by code, by CPD or ICD-9 code. So if they had surgery, it'll be a procedural code. And if they have a diagnosis, it'll be an, an ICD-9. or an ICD -9. Why are you just reminiscing about this? ICD, whatever the year is now. Kenny, you got to fact check this for us. Make sure she's telling the truth, okay? And if she is lying... We got to speculate on why she's lying. I don't like this hoodie, by the way. Look at the fucking, look how long these things are on this. What is that? Who who designed this hoodie? New York designed this hoodie, and they're usually not crazy, but they were crazy when they designed this hoodie. That shows how old I was when I started my medical office training, doesn't it? Um, But yeah, you know, it never really changes much. It just about the hoodie, a little. exactly. Uh, but yeah. at the end of the day, I went, mm. I worked a lot and I learned a lot, but I put a lot into that job and still remained, you know, a good, interactive, attentive mother, you know, and wife and woman. Um, but nothing was handed to me. I, I went from having nowhere to live um, or living with my ex's parents to getting my own apartment. Did, that guy paid for her apartment and everything though, right? Eric put up for her apartment, co-signed on the one of the cars, the Honda Civic, I guess. And then she, people are in and her stuff left, right, and center. She gets donations for the sponsors or whatever, right? Don't let something nothing, nothing that's ever handed to you. To getting a, a better apartment, to a better apartment, Ooh. to a better apartment, to a better apartment and situation, even though the apartment was a little smaller, but I was single um, when I got the smaller apartment and I needed the support from the family of my ex um, to a five bedroom house, you know? And I thought once I got that house that 
my life was settled. Like I thought I have my new career path. I'm out of the medical field. I had been working in entertainment for quite some time. And when I say entertainment, I combine everything. Entertainment, like creative. Okay. We got the first part. We got the creative part of entertainment. Um, sales, marketing, staffing. This is just an odd list of things. Curating events, staffing those events, and business. Um, and what's an example of that? Okay, well, staffing things like trade shows. You get a budget for a trade show. Okay. How do we go from medical to trade shows? Is that something you do in the medical thing? Is like go to do trade shows with the new medical equipment? Okay, this is how much I'll pay you per person. And this is coming from my vendor. So I get a client saying, okay, Heather. We should have titled this like learning things with Heather Gillespie. <laughs> don't take any of this advice, by the way. I don't, but I don't. I don't think it's probably good advice or else unless you want to live in a tent in Chicago. If you want that to be your life, then follow Heather's advice. I want you to put together a team and work an event. And I say, okay, great. This is my budget per person. This is what I can pay each person. This is what I can pay you. Um, this is how much, you know, budget there is for this day and this day on this day. We only want this many people and they give you the schematics of what they're looking for. Now you have to go through your private Rolodex of connections find people who want to work these jobs, adjust how much you're willing to pay them, see if there's any room to wiggle, you know, because if you hire someone brand new with no experience and you take on more responsibility, you- I feel like this is how Dylan pitched his job to her with the fucking selling the, uh, the renewable energy or whatever. Um, and I know where you're coming from, Danielle. I mean, but like, this is the thing though, right? She had a bunch of sugar daddies. All she had to do was like be an indoor cat. But she was like, I'm an outdoor cat. I'm crazy. And then she fucking like wrote all over the walls and did drugs and taped over the vents and was like a literal insane person. And it's like sometimes like you can't have a tiger in your house, right? It's just going to fuck shit up. You can't have like a hippopotamus like rolling around in your house. Um, so like if Heather was yeah, an indoor cat, it'd be, I guess, different. It's too bad she can't be. I mean, like, I just don't think it's in her DNA. You can afford to pay yourself two dollars more an hour or even hire you know a second or third person you have to be business savvy to understand how to make the money work for you and how to manipulate the budget in a way that makes the job easier and um better you know you don't just want easier you want easier and better you know you want a better return you want to get the job done in a way that is better right so i was doing that for a while i loved it Every single job I've done after leaving the medical field, I've absolutely loved. And to be honest with you, in the medical field, if there was not so much pressure from the, like, if I just had the one doctor, I would have loved it. I would have loved it. But at the same time, you can't, you can't be burnt out and then keep going for years and expect to have the same enthusiasm, bedside manner, et cetera, and so forth. There has to be a point in time where you identify that you're being overworked and then you are able to fix that situation. And for me, the only way I was able to was after literally complaining to HR for like a year, asking for raises, like literally I'd be in HR's office every other, every other week, like this is awful. I cannot take it anymore. I need more money. You know, I need more money. Um, Was that the only complaint? I need more money. Nothing actually bad's happening to me, happening to me in work where I would need to consult with HR about like, I don't know, sexual harassment or something like that. Uh, I just need more money, HR. Give me more money, please. And then you combine that going to HR for a year, asking for more money or, or the pressure to be relieved with having a late postpartum hemorrhage that almost kills you and having to go back to work three or four days after that because you have no FMLA left and you have to pay your rent. And that was what happened to me. And I lasted at Northwestern um, after having my youngest child. I mean, I was pumping milk, so I'm breast pumping. I'm super behind on work because I have five doctors or six doctors at that time. Plus I'm doing diabetic education for the entire 20th floor, which was another 20 doctors, or I'm sorry, 23rd floor, which was another 20 doctors. Oh shit. It is mid it's past midnight. It was like a half hour ago. We missed it. If it was like Cinderella, we would have been a, a pumpkin or something already. I have never seen Cinderella. I know there's a shoe and there's a pumpkin in it. And she 
something happens. Does she just lose her fancy clothes at midnight? She doesn't turn into a pumpkin, right? That doesn't make sense. Something else turns into a pumpkin. I don't know. Anyways, yes, happy Halloween. It's now past midnight and it's Halloween. So it's not Devil's Night anymore. Um, woo! The doctors Ooh. are so. And again, I love each task individually, but the accumulation of all of it together as only one person, it was just, what do you have left when you go home at the end of the day for your family, for your children? That was the measure that ultimately gave me the push I needed because I was terrified to lose that job. You have no idea. I would tell my dad, like, dad, every day I would call him crying at lunch and tell him, dad, if, if I tell them I can't handle this work, they're going to give this job to someone else and I need this job. You know, that's all I have. And I just felt so, so pressured to just show up in every way for everyone. As I, I think she was just like an admin, like she was at the front desk. I don't think she was either. I don't think she was a registered north, north, a registered nurse, or a. I don't know what that word is, Jenny. I'm sorry. Um, things usually don't add up with Heather, though. So I, I'm. I have been doing since I was 14 years old, but who shows up when I need them? Really? Like, let's look at it. Let's analyze it. To this day, who, where am I right now? And who has shown up for me? You know? And um, so, needless to say, uh, there was a situation that ended up occurring. It was also one of gay rights or gay... Uh, back in this period of time where lesbian... Babe, what's the acronym? LGBTQ. LGBTQ... LGQTB, tell me one more time. LGBTQ. LGBTQ movement was like going super crazy. Well, what I think like there's a couple extra letters though. Whatever happens when you put, when you pay attention to something like that is that lawyers and like class action lawsuit shit that that gets really hot. They start seeing, oh, okay, well we're gonna make a big lot of publicity about this shit, and then all these lawyers start peeping out of the woodworks. And before you know it, it goes from a movement that's morally based to one that is so corrupt and money driven. So I got in, I got put in charge. We got a new, endo, we got a new endocrinologist at the practice. We already had four, um, but we got a new one. And I, I don't know what that is. What, uh, I mean, I guess this doesn't have to relate to her pregnancy or anything like that. It's just, um, it's just her work experience at the hospital that's not an experience. I got it. I got put in charge of hiring his assistant or interviewing his assistant, which I appreciated because it was my first time ever doing a formal interview. And I really wanted that experience. So I was super grateful for that. I didn't feel like that was being overworked. I felt like I was truly the best person for the job because even our administration, as I said, it was so far separated from the clinical that they could not anticipate the needs of an endocrinologist. What the fuck does a office manager know about, you know, endocrinology not a fucking thing and what do they know about the workflow nothing you know so i felt honored almost like very grateful to be a part of that process i knew what we needed in a candidate and i also knew that hiring a candidate who could do what i was doing was going to help me out a lot you know and relieve a lot of that pressure so i interviewed this girl i think i interviewed like five people in total the the last one i interview i she's a lesbian and she has a super lesbian haircut and she walks in and tells me and she's from an Ivy League college. I believe she was studying rocket science, and I'm not even kidding. And she tells me that her name, she tells her name, and she says, if there's more than one, and then- Did she say she was studying rocket science? Like Susie the Dyke was studying rocket science. Is that what she said? Her name, I don't wanna say her name on here. I don't wanna bust her out, but if there's more than one, let's just call her Susie. If there's more than one Susie, you can call me Susie with the dykey haircut. And I just burst out laughing. And the, <laughs> she was a very, very formerly a lesbian, you know, and she kind of dressed super dykey. Um, <laughs> but I just thought it was so funny because the climate and the political climate around this, say it again, babe. LGBTQ. LGBTQ was so like, can't even breathe so elevated so publicized so much in the media that she would walk in and say something like that and i i was like i have to know this lady better like i wasn't attracted to her or anything just i wanted to be i wanted her on my team i felt like she was smart she was funny and in conversation she could 
easily, you know, repeat back what I was looking for and offer suggestions even before she knew the exact job, you know? So I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to disregard that comment um, as being inappropriate and take it as being, you know, what we need in this like otherwise very stuffy work environment. There's a lot of laws and ethics when it comes to medical. So to find someone like that, I felt like it was a major win and I hired her or I recommended her to be hired on the spot. Um, fast forward three to six months later, she gets ill. Susie gets sick. And anytime one of like my team is out, I I'm pretty sure this is all bullshit. What she did was call Susie a dyke, and then she got put under review, and then she went crazy, and then I think she even quit. I don't even think she was fired. I, I, that's what I think happened. I'm the covering. So if anyone on the endocrinology floor is gone, I'm automatically the assistant. That spread out to several other um, niches or specialties, which was not common for everyone, but for me, I was always the one, you know, that was covering. So she gets ill and, she, and we're waiting on test results from her. And her endocrinologist was new, a new young guy. Um, and I had also been his assistant before hiring this girl, Susie. So I take over for her. She's hospitalized and I'm incredibly worried. Plus I have a late postpartum hemorrhage. I just got back in the office three days ago. I'm breast pumping. This girl's like practically dying. Like it's a serious illness, whatever she's got. I don't know the exact diagnosis. Her, her test results come through, okay? It's my job to go through this big bin of test results that come back before they get classified. If they are not automatically classified by AI, meaning if they are not attached to the patient's chart by AI, I have to go through, look for their name, the referring physician. That I don't know if it's AI. It might just be like, that. The, if you... I don't know. I don't know why she's trying to like overcomplicate. I'm pretty sure it's just a filing system. Time and date of exam. And it's AI. Attach them to the patient's chart manually. We also do this for stat orders. So if, if an order is very important or time sensitive, it's called classifying the unknown box. So I'm literally sitting there classifying the unknown box, bleeding out, trying not to die, breast pumping milk, having three kids at home, six doctors, and not getting a fucking raise, by the way. And all of a sudden I get called into HR's office and it's, you know, the next day and, and HR is saying, we have a timestamp of you entering this patient's chart. It was Susie. And not only had Susie placed a complaint against HIPAA violation against me saying that I had classified and moved her test result and that I wasn't supposed to do that, which I was, it was my job, but that I also referred to her as Susie with the dikey haircut and that she was offended. <laughs> You guys, I could not even believe it. So now the same reason I hired this girl is the reason why I'm getting ready. She, did, she didn't hire Susie. Hold on. I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask if she hired Susie. I don't think she fucking hired Susie. Reprimanded. I could not believe it. I felt so undervalued, so unappreciated, so ignored. I just could not stand it. And I was told that I would need, in, in order to avoid lawsuit, Northwestern had to take action, which I understood um you know but didn't agree with and they're like you have to come in on saturdays for two weeks of sensitivity training i could not unpaid i could not even i'm like okay so i just got done giving birth to my third child i had a late postpartum hemorrhage and came back to work three days later and am assisting with at the very minimum of an extra three doctors than the one i was actually hired to assist on any given day and you have the audacity to ask me to come in for free on Saturdays and take sensitivity training. Absolutely not. I'm not racist. I'm not sexist. I'm not against lesbians or gay or trans or any of that queer shit. As long as you don't do it to me, I don't care. Like I'm not going. And I said nothing. I remember looking at, I think it was Colleen Doyle or maybe it was Kelly. I don't remember, but I remember looking them dead in their eye and just calmly getting up saying like, I think I was like streaming tears down my face, but like saying almost nothing, which is not, how I usually am and just like walked back to my desk, grabbed a printer box, loaded all my shit into it, clocked out and walked out that motherfucker. I don't even think I said goodbye to my doctor. And that was not like me. Like I said, I, I had a personal relationship with these doctors. I went to very nice, fancy dinners that were drug rub sponsored with these doctors. Sometimes these doctors just took us out for our birthday. They bought us lunch when we didn't have money. 
like I felt like they were friends of mine um, in a professional capacity, of course, but I felt very, very loyal to them. Um, I felt awful just walking out, but I couldn't take it anymore. Um, I was at that point dealing with the worst wow. postpartum depression. I had just caught Orlando uh, messaging online with a whole bunch of women. I had a late postpartum hemorrhage. I was overworked and underpaid. I had three infants, well, one infant and two children under six. So two children under six and an infant baby, a late postpartum hemorrhage, a full-time career that I was working full-time and a half for the money that was, I probably got paid the least in my entire pod or in the, in the, in the least 10, because the women who had been there had been there so long that they just get raises incrementally just for existing and being there, you know, not for how much they knew or how much they put into the situation. And that always bothered me, you know, but I didn't have the balls to say anything while I was there. So I wanted to leave for a long time. I didn't, let me, let me clarify. I never wanted to leave. I wanted to feel heard, respected, and like I was a valuable member of the team. I didn't feel that way. And so because I couldn't get any results after communicating after. I'm glad we got Kenny here. Kenny's like this, all this is not by the book. If she was actually legit, this would be some fucked up shit. Um, yeah. So she's doing like registered nurse slash. Uh, I don't know what that is. So uh, CNA, um, that's alone worth firing. Um, and like, she's just, like, can't be calling people mean names of work. It's supposed to be a safe space at work. After submitting, you know, requests, et cetera, and so forth. My doctors would tell me every single time I recommended you for a raise. I always recommend you for a raise. We never speak anything. Poor. When they come for your performance reviews, we review the fuck out of you. All fives. Like we love you. And because I would ask them, am I doing what more can I do? You know, almost obsessively. And I finally just grabbed my shit, grabbed the computer paper box, packed it with all my stuff and literally walked out, just walked out. Not a plan, not a dollar, no car. Had to take that big box on the, on the train, like had no idea what the fuck I was going to do. A newborn baby and two kids and just caught the father of Alexis cheating on me. If you call it cheating online talking to me, I did. I had never seen a porn before. Online talking? What do you mean online talking? What is that? What the fuck does that mean? He was just talking to somebody online? Was it like sexy talk or was it just like, I'm talking to a female? <laughs> or I was not at all involved in anything sexual, never been a part of the nightlife, never even been to a club. I believe with the exception of Martini Club once with Orlando's sister, uncle and cousin for a birthday party and Paris Club once with my own little sister for her birthday. Never, no other clubbing, no bar. I'd never been in a bar until I was damn near 30 years old. Just no history of or experience with the nightlife. Um, and then I found myself in a position of desperation. And luckily it was right around the time I got my income tax return. And I lived in the basement of, like I said, Orlando's grandma. So I had support there. Um, I had, you know, I didn't have to pay my own electricity. I didn't have to pay my own gas. I had to pay only $200 a month. Um, rent. It was 400 a month. Orlando was expected to pay 200 and I was expected to pay 200. Um, so I had enough money to, to pay that for a while, you know, and I could breathe for a second. Um, and I thought that that's where it would end, you know, and that I would be able to get everything in control. Once I got that job at the eye doctor. BCG, this lady, this late, oh my God, <laughs> it's not mirrored anymore. This lady never hired Susie, right? She never hired Susie. I just want to be sure about that. I don't know. I just it sound like they hired Susie. Um, I can't see them putting Heather in a position of hiring people like at all. Um, this is also, yeah, not, a, not, not her best stream she's ever done. But that's when I was kidnapped into the underworld. Um, and that's the beginning of my novel. Um, if you guys have read the intro, I know I've published it to my blog before. It's very gripping. A lot of people who have, have read it are super excited to read the novel. Xavier gets me. Now understand, I've purchased at least five laptops or internet devices. Laptops, phones, um, not Chromebook. Uh, yeah, Chromebook, the Google one. Yeah. Chromebooks, whatever. They keep either getting stolen, broken, hacked. I mean, that's a far cry from uh i hired this person made small talk with someone in the fucking interview room yeah so um and i said that she got uh put on what writing up she was like under review for calling Susie a dyke um and then she quit right 
opposed to her crazy story that she's telling right now, being like, ah, nah, 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 nah. I, I haven't, I've been like tuning in. <laughs> the first stream was way better. The one where she was fucking interrogating Xavier. I ended up playing both of them. Um, because like, if there's not a lot of content at Friday, then I figure like we can go back in time, learn about this Eric fella and all that other stuff that I'm not aware of. Um, so it'll work either way, but yeah, I'm glad, glad you stopped. And I didn't, I scheduled like a half hour before I did it. So yeah, I wasn't expecting too many people to show up. Whatever the case may be. So I've handwritten the majority of my novel, um, at least the loose outline, 425 pages. I carry it around with me literally everywhere I go. It's right here. Everywhere I go. So. It oh, BCG. I, um, Aunt Stacy was in chat this stream as well. And she was telling us some stuff um which is pretty cool right um yeah i just thought it <laughs> xavier the other day surprises me with a gift that he's been holding a keyboard not only that someone dropped us off an extra phone the phone i actually had through the state of illinois before it got stolen um when i was staying at the franklin park penthouse so the same phone that they they replaced that was stolen from me and I get a Bluetooth keyboard and I'm thinking we have a spot with with access to electricity temporarily or whatever. 311 has been MIA for the longest time. All I can do right now is, you know, sit tight, make sure that I'm healthy, my baby's healthy, that I'm not getting too stressed out and, and freaked out, um, you know, and that I'm safe and that I'm keeping myself as safe as possible from the harassment and abuse while also being ignored blatantly by law enforcement you know, and having that preoccupi preoccupied fear that the system has been shut down because I've been unable to receive any sort of response from them. Um, so we get here, I hook up the keyboard, <laughs> add that to the list of devices that has been sabotaged and not working. This is the second keyboard Xavier's gotten from me. One was donated from a sponsor. Xavier bought this. That doesn't look like a keyboard. Is it a foldable key? That looks like a fucking 3DS or something. This one for me, I believe a sponsor probably gave him money for it. I don't really know, but it doesn't work at, at all. It doesn't even connect to my iPhone, to the device that I'm using to write the book, nor to Xavier's device. So this is four years, you guys, of being displaced from my home. And since 2015 that I was kidnapped into the underworld, um, police have been here the, every step of the way. She is pretty boring. I find when she's getting ready, like her makeup uh, streams, when she's just going on about this stuff, it's usually pretty boring. I think she needs to be withdrawn to be like on edge and crazy. Um, when her phone's shaking and she has the other phone and it's shaking and she's shaking all these papers around and I'm trying to find like a still frame where it's not blurry to see what the fuck she's talking about. And then even when we do that and we read it, it's just like not what she's describing at all. Like those um, text messages. It's like... This is all the time. This is what they say. It's like it's just like saying like opt out if you don't want to get texts like this anymore. And it's they're not no information to them. I've written hundreds of police reports, no exaggeration. Um, in the police reports, I've never been able to name a single person who's responsible because the situations that they put me in, um, it's impossible. Like having a beverage and being at a nightclub, but having a top on the beverage and having it like a side to the table using the restroom or bringing it with me and then somehow ending up high from something else while I'm working bottle service. How do I, I, I write that I reported it and I went to the hospital to have my system cleaned out, but I don't know who did that. And because so many of the situations are like that, they're using me mostly for information rather than as a victim, but then I'm stabbed. So make sense of this but then I'm stabbed, jumped and stabbed by three women. The driver of the car and the main like um, aggressor came to visit someone in the prison, the same visit prison room that I was in with Dylan, who was- now I wonder how much this story is gonna change this time. Was my co-star on Love After Lockup. Um, she checked in with an ID and you have to give your license plate number every time you go into the- Does she, I don't know if she thinks she's getting like new people coming in. Maybe this is for me. She's like, you know, that Steve guy, he's-, he's <laughs> Let's dress up as him and give him some background information because he hasn't figured it out already. Those visits. I was on Love After Lockup, but still, that's probably the only way people know of you. So on camera at a gas station, her and two of her friends jumped out of her car, stabbed me 11 times with screwdrivers, left blood splatter all over, 
in front of three to five witnesses and an ambulance came to pick me up and took me to the hospital to be treated for my wounds and no criminal charges were pressed. So I can't get victim services. Several hundred dollars stolen from my car during that attack. Then I was bludgeoned by a man uh, in broad daylight at the car wash with my own tire iron. Numerous witnesses, people got it on recording, was brought by ambulance to Elmhurst Hospital, had staples in the back of my head, um, huge lacerations and fractures all over my face. Um, Fine news story. She needs to go for the news story where something like this crazy happens because this is all old. You know, we've already heard these ones. These are like just playing the greatest hits on repeat. My my legs stayed in the hospital five days. Also covid stayed in the hospital five days and then drove to tampa bay florida for a job at rose bar tampa bay was hired immediately worked even though i was fucked up i mean i was pumpkin head fucked up you guys and then pumpkin head fucked up but you still where, where was she working at the time was she doing the escort shit <laughs> oh my god i don't know i'm sure some johns were negotiating lower prices be like look at this pumpkin head bitch like you want me to fuck that i don't know i'm not <laughs> there's video of this posted on the one heather gee account this account the hlg forever account all of them have video of this like very very clear video no arrests were made again no charges were, were prosecuted supposedly how do you explain this you know i'm not an officer i'm a civilian and i'm a mother of three children and it seems like it was incredibly premeditated because my children who have lived with me their entire lives on a full-time basis, meaning four or five days out of the week or more their entire lives are strategically moved out of my home, placed with their fathers. And I'm just like, you know, the office when Dwight puts the pumpkin head and gets stuck on him. I'm just thinking that like it was pumpkin head. <laughs> and then I began being attacked on a regular basis, thrown out of my home my car destroyed that I just paid $15,000 for 21 jobs, legal W2 jobs that I apply for, get hired at and am working jobs at suddenly develop some sort of crazy urgent issue and reason why I can't work there anymore. In 36 months, I've had 21 jobs. I don't have a problem keeping a job. I don't have a substance abuse problem. You know, I'm a mom. I'm Heather Gillespie. Maybe you have me confused with someone else. I must. She keeps reminding us who she is. So it's just interesting. Um, she, she, I love how she calls herself a mom. You don't have custody of your kids at all. Your primary joint custody or whatever. That's bullshit. So, um, I don't know. It's a weird label. That's like me saying, um, I don't know. I'll have to think of something. Some people call me Coco Chanel YSL. I have a company, GoPro Solo. It started out doing sexy content and all this cool. I'm a famous flute player, guys. You know, <laughs> can't play the flute for shit, but I'm famous for it. All right. First nonsense and evolved into the beautiful conglomerate that it is today. Fitness, fashion, family and fun. Hello. It's been the same. It's never changed. It's just how. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what I think of when I watch this shit is family, fitness, creative fun. What the fuck did she just say? What? <laughs> All of this whole stream has just been that, no, for sure. How have they been treating me? And what access have I had to be creative? Okay. Can you keep the window open a little bit? Because it's really, really hot. Yeah. Turn the fucking air dryer up. So, I don't know, you guys. I have called. Now, let's come to now. Um, I got pregnant with twins on birth control. Got pregnant just this pregnancy on birth control. Um, I only have sex with Xavier unless I'm being raped by force. Um, and you know, I've reported all that to law enforcement as well. I believe only in monogamous relationships. I don't believe in, you know, being sexually promiscuous. I never have in my entire life. Uh, as I've said numerous times, anytime I've slept with anyone, it's been, you know, a very premeditated disgust. Do we need to look at the definition of, uh, promiscuous because there doesn't mean like multiple partners and shit. And that's what she did. She just, you she was with multiple people for money. And even like when she described it in that crazy interview, she was like, Dylan was a cuck. So I just like did stuff with other guys, which would be the definition of promiscuous. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Let me look it up. Never. I'm in the vertical screen, so I don't think I can, it's going to mess everything up, but I can, 
I can Google it on here. Um, you know, situation that I don't take lightly. Maybe. Um, and I don't believe in meaningless exchanges of energy or giving that part of yourself to random people. Um, period. So that's that. Having having or characterized by many transient sexual relationships, uh, demonstrating or implying an unselective approach, indiscriminate or casual. Yeah, I mean, that's close enough. That I'm now 26 weeks pregnant. My relationship with my children, what has it looked like since filming the show? As I said, as the violence in my life increases, I get fewer and fewer face-to-face -face interactions with my children. I have at the very least gone every single month, once a month to see them. And I usually have to do that walking with a cart that weighs between two and 300 pounds, including all the first five months of my pregnancy that I made that trip two times each month or more. I also at one point was balancing a bicycle on top of the cart and riding a hundred miles, you know, on that bicycle. I feel like I have deja vu. Have I watched this? No, I have watched this before. She's just like, she said that before, obviously, I'm sure. Three months pregnant. There were several days we came from O'Hare, Rosemont area, all the way down to, pardon me, all the way downtown and back. So I've been very, very active and exercising and staying very, very healthy. Uh, I am a weightlifter. I'm not a runner. I've never really been good at running. Um, I have like a lot of... Have you guys seen her run? She does run very poorly. It's like, she's just fucking like she it reminds me you know when a dog is swimming and like the doggy pal that's what she does just in the air running i don't get it i don't know what she's thinking is gonna it's not aerodynamic maybe it helps her balance who knows cushion cushioning like issues and joint pain when i run so things tell you like if, if something that you try is not okay. making you stronger oh um and is causing you pain and um degeneration that you should not do it right so why would i run i like low impact cardio like stairs or swimming i love to swim i was on the swim team as a young child so i've always been a swimmer um, and that's how i stay active with regards to my physical activity um and how it affects my ability to do anything it affects my ability to do nothing when i had a gym membership i still saw my children more than i do now and spent all the rest of my time in the gyms but like you left your 12 year old to look after the rest of the kids to go to the gym, right? We found that out today. So since they've destroyed my ability to have a gym membership um, and literally followed me to about seven different gyms, stealing my membership, literally, um, I have just been doing that, that, you know, that walking with this heavy ass cart while I'm pregnant. It's fucking awful. I mean, it's awful. I am grateful for my health. And I'm grateful to be, you know, growing a strong, healthy baby. Um, but it's awful. It's boring. I like to work out. I lift weights. That's healthy too. I don't understand whose nefarious plot is affected negatively or adversely by me being able to be who I truly am. Um, but they don't like it. They do not like it when I do things that make me healthy. And I don't know why. Uh, in addition to that, I've had problems. So the first year of this, I would go pick up my kids all the time. Even if we just sat in my car and like watched movies on my phone or went to go grab food or took a drive, I was used to having them with me every single day. And that's what I wanted to continue. Um, I never expected that I would still be homeless four years later. Um, I don't know how this is legal, ethical, moral. Uh, it's not, and it's not. I've gone to petition the court locally numerous times, at least 10 times, been blatantly ignored got a new apartment, a studio that I thought, um, again, a representative from either the state or some sort of advocacy program uh, presented me with, just as Xavier, you know. I want, like, imagine meeting Xavier, and it's like, can you just take me through a day in your life? And it's like, well, Heather wakes up, and then she puts on her makeup, and then she just starts reciting her life story from somewhere around the time the Dylan shit happened to now. And it just, it takes a couple hours sometimes. Sometimes she's literally hopped up. She can get through it really fast. We can get on with her day. But every fucking day, we got to hear her whole life story. Like, literally. It's, I don't, I, we don't, why? You know, approaches me and says that he knows about the situation and is here to help me. That was the case with everyone else who um, approached me. They knew about the, the struggle that I was facing. And they said that they were there, sent there specifically to help. Um, and I assumed that it was, you know, that, um, 
there are many different places that I've been, about 40 in the last four years, and I have a, a very, very detailed summary of every place with dates, uh, addresses, and names um, of where I've stayed, so there is nowhere. In addition, I have forensic accounting by means of my debit card. Uh, I have bank statements already printed out with me from the years 2000, I believe, 18 through present. Um, so I have all of that every time I've used my debit card. In addition to that, I have had a link card since the time Dylan was released. So awesome. They have all these things. I think the narrative is just circular. It just goes in a circle. I wonder if she says this in her sleep. Like if she's talking in her sleep, this like <laughs> Xavier, do you get any time to like any peace and quiet ever? I didn't have one for many, many months before he was uh, released from incarceration. Uh, but I did go and get one when he went and got one upon his release. When you spend money on groceries, um, you know, through a link card, that transaction is also recorded. So in order to keep, and you can use it in all 50 states. So everywhere I've been and the length of time I've been there is very easy to track. Uh, there should be no question. And that's relevant and important because as I said before, I don't have any drug issues. Uh, I don't have any criminal history. Um, I've never been imprisoned uh, for any length of time. At, at best, I've been accused um, or arrested for driving uh, or some sort of ticket. Just driving. I was just driving normally and they arrested me for driving. I did. Was that a slip? <laughs> um, and that's it. You know, I have never ever, I have no criminal record. Um, so you could look that up and there is nothing there. Um, and, and that's very important and relevant because when you're going through a list of, of reasons how a person could end up in a situation like this, at least for me, a very analytical person who's, you know, logical and practical for the most part, I'm trying to look for what caused this so that I can look for a reverse to that, you know, so a sort of anti-venom to whatever has caused this situation. And Water down to has some conspiracies in the chat. Um, no, they're not the same person. Not that I know. Maybe they are the same person. That would be very, <laughs> I don't think so. No, uh, <laughs> I gotta grab another drink. The, the repetition and victimizations and physical abuse and sexual abuse, um, that remains not just unhealed, but completely unaddressed. Uh, the only time I'm able to bring it up is when I feel as though it's happening again. Uh, so that's, it's like. Jordan Peterson said, you, you don't begin healing a person of their trauma while they're still being traumatized. Um, and there's, I've never heard a truer statement, but, um, again, 311 is the city's program for assisting with homelessness. Even though I feel as though the city owes me a big, huge check for throwing me out of my apartment in the first place, uh, while Dylan was using every drug that there is on parole, living with me in our home, our family home that we shared together and lived in together, um, he should have been removed and my children and I should have been left alone. You know, uh, there was no reason for what took place. It was incredibly illegal, unlawful, unethical, immoral, um, and corrupt. And as I said before, I believe that the whole reason for it is because of all of the nefarious involvement that Dylan had in working cases for the state. And they're trying to say, or the feds, they're trying to say that he is in the pumpkin went out again, but like I can't light it right now. I don't know where my spaghetti is. Um, which is weird. I must have put it somewhere weird. It might be in the other room, but I can't just leave. <laughs> They're going, I'm gonna wait. Well, how far in are we? Oh, we're almost at the end. Nine more minutes, and then and then we'll be done. And then who knows if she doesn't do anything for the rest of the week, we'll be doing like a deep dive on Friday. Dad because of all of the fraudulent parties that he threw in hotels, racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars of fraud. Um, but in my opinion, that has nothing to do with me or my children. And so that should be, if that's truly the issue, that should be removed from mine and my children's lives. And we should not be on the hold for any sort of that indebtedness, right? Why would you throw a, an innocent woman and her children into the street if you have a problem with Dylan? It just doesn't make sense. And the state of Illinois has been completely unresponsive in addressing any of it. And I'm not irrational. I saw Xavier. I wish I had the other screen up. Can we put it back? We can put it back. Hold up. What? I want to see Xavier. Never heard a truer statement. But um, 
again, 311 is the city's program for assisting with homelessness, even though I feel as though the city owes me a big, huge check for throwing me out of my apartment in the first place. Uh, while Dylan was using every drug that there is on parole, living with me in our home, our family home that we shared together and lived in together, um, he should have been removed and my children and I should have been left alone. You know, uh, there was no reason. Why'd you bring him in? Why'd you bring him in the house, Heather Gillespie? For what took place, it was incredibly illegal, unlawful, unethical, immoral, um, and corrupt. And as I said before, I believe that the whole reason for it is because of all of the nefarious involvement that Dylan had in working cases for the state. And they're trying to say, or the feds, they're trying to say that he is in debt because of all of the fraudulent parties that he threw in hotels, racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars of- did I miss him? I think I might have missed Dylan. Fraud. <laughs> um, but in my opinion, that has nothing to do with me or my children. And so that should be, if that's truly the issue, that should be removed from mine and my children's lives. And we should not be on the hold for any sort of that indebtedness, right? Why would you throw a, an innocent woman and her children into the street if you have a problem with Dylan? It just. Oh, I think he's about to pop up here. Um, yeah, she did say legal joint primary custody. She did say that earlier. This doesn't make sense. And the state of Illinois has been completely unresponsive oh, okay. in addressing any. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good enough. Look at that. We got an Xavier shot and a wild Xavier. Let me get the mouse off of his face. Woo. That's as far in as I can zoom. Let me see if we can get something a little better. We get a ninja shot. Any of it. No, he's he's different. And I'm not, not irrational. I'm not unapproachable. Um, I have called very, very calm. More than 75% of my calls. I will admit that I have been flying off the fucking handle heated. Many of the calls as any rational person would be if they just discovered that they were being sexually assaulted again or falsely implicated in crime or held apart from their child for any length of time. Now, fortunately for me, there has never been a period of more than a few weeks when I've not been in contact via FaceTime video with all of my children, with the exception of Alexis. Beginning May 26th, uh, Xavier and I walked out there to drop off groceries and have lunch with my daughter. Xavier never joins me in these meetings. He just stays nearby because I was not ready and I'm still not ready to introduce my children to anyone until I know that I have a stable living situation um, and a stable partnership. Don't have, well, you're with the wrong guy then because you, sh you should have, you should have had that all figured out already. <laughs> this has been what 16 months you've been with this guy. I think he's the wrong, he's I'm not, he's not the one. He's not the one. Am I grateful for any sort of protection I've gotten from Xavier or assistance with meals or whatever? Absolutely. Um, does that mean that that's all I need out of a relationship to bring that person into the lives of my children? Absolutely not. There's a whole list of other things that I need. So he would like sit a block away and allow me to go with Alexis an hour or two. Um, you know, at a time I didn't have a car anymore, so we couldn't sit in my car and watch films. Um, we were very exposed. And at the time I was very under pressure and I have been ever since. So what does that mean? That means that people who are posing as some sort of investigators, whether it's PIs, government authorities, law enforcement, or the FBI following me, making very forward and abrupt commentary around me, sometimes even threats. And I'm reporting it to police because they never identify themselves as to what agency they're working with. And police are simply collecting online crime reports or in-person crime reports and doing nothing about it, saying that they need more, more proof in order to do anything. I don't know how watered down tea has become the most interesting part of this stream. The moderators don't get paid. <laughs> I don't pay my moderators. What am I going to pay them with? What are you talking about? What is this? Well, I have less than 3,000 subs, bro. You think I'm paying people to moderate? I don't even like, I don't even expect them to moderate unless some crazy stuff is happening. And then I would probably take care of it myself. I don't want to put that pressure on people. It's just, uh, this is just a light YouTube stream. <laughs> it's not that deep, bro. So I started recording everyone. That's all these highlights and for the record sections. If I noticed a car that would be around me on more than one day, I would record it. I don't know who they are, but I recorded them. If I would notice that someone was chasing me, harassing me or stalking me, in addition to the police reports, I would post a video. I would record it and post it here. 
right? So 90% of the abuse that I described can be proven um, at the very least beyond a reasonable doubt by going through the videos, looking at the license plates of cars, looking at the repeat characters who continue to show their faces in one way or another in the background even and going to them and asking them, what is your involvement? I can't do that as a police, as, as a non-police officer, as a civilian. I don't have access to any sort of personal Rolodex of people. I can't look up, I can't put someone's driver's license plate number in a system and find out where they live and go question them. I'm not an officer. I'm a civilian. Kenny's like an OG. Kenny's been here since like the, the pretty much the beginning. Um, like right in my, what is it? The, the introduction to the Repsion times, right? I think Kenny. Uh, Crows of Judgment, Repsion, back in like, what, 2019, 2020? So what, whose role is it to find out who those people are? You guessed it. That would be law enforcement. So a lot of my resentment in, in this situation, I'm not saying that the law enforcement personally held me down and let me get raped, but they definitely played a part. Most definitely played a part. Um, in addition to that, uh, you know, I ha into having all the proof. I've also cured. I've also created a very reliable timeline, as I said, based off of. I mean, Water Down T definitely isn't an NPC or a bot. <laughs> they got big tits energy. I don't know. I like. I just. I've never heard of conspiracies like this. It's. It's, it's entertaining. I like it. Of financial documents based off of postings and narratives that I've written, poems that I've written with coding in them on some of the photos. Uh, if you go back to the one Heather GEE account, I have been recording everything that has taken place, the way it's made me feel, why I felt that way in one way or another um, on every one of my postings. So you might not be able to understand it and you might need to ask for more information if you have questions, but it's all there. Um, I have never once been in any way, anything other than completely transparent uh, and eager to return to my life as a mother, uh, whether that's by being a full-time employee and supporting myself alone, um, or whether that's being a stay-at-home mother and my husband supports us, or whether that's by winning all of these lawsuits and that money is what supports us. I don't know, you know, but I do know that mercifulstorm.com, Do You Doll, GoPro Solo, these are all endeavors that 100% have humongous ROI for any reasonable investor. There are so many ways to make profit off of all of these companies that I have poured 10 plus years of hard work into. Um, I don't understand why I continue to receive only hatred in my inbox. Um, it does not make sense. If you don't think this is a profitable business endeavor, then just keep going. But why are you starting? What? What business endeavor is this? I'm a victim business endeavor. You want to invest in my business? Talking me. Why are you calling me out of my name? Why are you enticing me to argue? Or Also, like I said, she says the same thing every day, like her life story. If this is what you're getting in result of what you're doing, maybe you should try something different. Maybe. Maybe. Or behave in ways that I don't believe in behaving in. Why are you forcing me to question my safety and security on almost a daily basis. Why are you following me around breaking my tent, you know, urinating into my gym shoes, things of that nature. I don't hurt anyone. I've never done anything so petty in my entire life as to the things that have been done to me. In addition to having my belongings urinated on, my tent broken, six tents I've purchased in the last two years that Xavier and I have been outside on and off. It's been a solid period of eight, almost nine months I mean, this tent is pretty new. I don't remember you telling me to delete a stream, though. Maybe one stream where I got really drunk and I was like, ah, but uh, <laughs> multiple streams. I don't know about that, Kenny. What was I doing on these streams? That was so bad. I mean, I did relive that once. Remember that scammer, that one that uh, the trans lady who faked a kidnapping. And when we thought she was kidnapped, I was like, we got to go help this person. And then she turned out she faked it. And then they, they threatened me with like legal action. And I was like, get out of here. Um, maybe one of those streams you might have told me to take down just to like get the heat off me. Because a lot of people did end up doing that. But not me because I'll pick fight with anybody. February 15th is the first night that we spent outside of this year, 2023. And we remained outdoors until today. We have not had a single night in a hotel, not a single night indoors, nothing since February. Prior to that, we were inside only because I was working full-time at Gatier and I was paying for our Airbnb. 
We had an Airbnb that I paid for 100% of the time out of my check. Three weeks after I lost my job at um, Gatier and I was still recovering from losing the twins that I went into labor with preterm December 26th of 2022, Xavier and I spent three days together at Swedish Covenant Hospital recovering from that. And then his father funded our next. The ex-girlfriend streams. Do you mean the stream? I was responding to Colton. Colton saying I was a domestic abuser. And I was like, no. And I was debunking those ones because like, I don't know. I don't really defend myself anymore. If that's the thing, like, uh, it's a waste of my time, to be honest. <laughs> if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. I don't, I can't be out here fighting fucking windmills every day. Um, so no, I don't do that stuff anymore, but, uh, I still don't, I stand by it. Like, fuck that shit. Why would why you get to say that? Fucking Colton. What a crazy guy that guy was. Three Airbnbs. After that, my Airbnb <laughs> account was suspended time. for no reason. Every single was Airbnb dark. was paid for by my debit card and cash that either was deposited from my job at Gatier or from the money that Xavier's father had given us. I don't do fraud. I've never done fraud. I've spent eight to 15 hours a week for, and I wrote this down just to verify how many hours each week for the first four months after Airbnb suspended my account looking for resolution. And on do you think you can save her watered down to you? If she was off drugs, do you think you could uh, show her the way? Would you date Heather? I don't know if you're a guy or a gal. I think you're a guy. I think that's a powerful picture of a guy. Understanding to this day, they have given me neither. They have given me neither. Simply dis disconnected my account. Just it's not there anymore. How? How? So I'm not being um, prevented from parenting my children because I don't have custody. I do have custody. I carry my custody agreement around with me on my phone. Me and my exes split 50-50 custody. We have joint custody. I am the primary custodial parent of all three children, and I have not been being treated like it. When I go to the courthouse and ask them, they say nothing or make up some excuses to pass the buck. None of any of the civil rights violations that I've incurred or violations to my personal safety or body have ever been heard in court at all anywhere yet when i went to report being raped by force there's too many things going on kenny i don't i'm gonna have to go back and watch the streams i don't even think they're up anymore they might be i don't know um but i swear i was just responding to colton and then that stream turned into sen calling into colton because colton was like steve can't come in and fucking speak for himself and that was the whole reason i was stream sniping that I uh, basically just listened to San and Colton talk about my fucking relationship with my ex in that chat. And I was just correcting things because that was fucking insane. And they were saying a whole bunch of, that was the time they were like, I hit my head off a cupboard and Steve's an abuser because of that. But um, unless there's something else I'm not remembering. But like I said, I stand behind all that shit. It was just, uh, yeah, that was a crazy time. I don't know if it was like the darkest time of my life, but it was, uh, it wasn't the best time. That's uh, worse shit has happened. Like what Repsion tried to do was way worse than any of that. I was put in handcuffs by Elmhurst police and transferred to Lombard Police Department on a warrant for not stopping at a stop sign, failure to yield, which was also corrupt. All of it. Law enforcement are the ones who hooked that uh, safe place up to stay with Andy. They knew where I was. It was all a game to them. And I have been looking desperately for my lawyer to get involved, but no communication has been allowed to him. Please make this make sense if you can, because you can. Um, the purpose in me just closing my work history and my li list of experience is that I... After, wait, this stream was after that stream? Like I did another stream after the Colton stream? Because that doesn't make sense. Was this a different X? I don't think it would have been. That's not something I would do. Like, because I've had a few different exes that I wouldn't talk about them. This is the one that was like accusing me of being crazy. But I don't know. I'll go search my YouTube uh, catalog and see what I can find. And then if you're right, Kenny, I'll be like, Kenny, I understand why you told me to delete that. But um, I don't know. I'll, I'll do some digging. I'll watch myself. I've Aura has shown me videos that I'm like, I don't remember recording this or doing this at all. Um, 
there was like a couple of Repzilla videos and he was like, Steve, I'm using your own points against you. And I'm like, I don't remember making those points, but I still think Repzilla is not that bad. Repzilla is, he's a, he's a, he got hit in the head with a car. He's, he's all right. I need employment immediately. I am about to be seven months pregnant. I can do anything. I can be an influencer and do DIYs. I can be a marketer and create online social media management. I can create anything. I can write, I can make content. I can literally do dollar store specials. All of those ideas that you people see there are my ideas. I curated all of them and I have my notes and dates from the time that I wrote them down and the things that I've done. These people who they're putting in my newsfeed 100% were inspired. Is that how it ends? That might be how it ends. Yeah. She always ends like she starts off crazy, doesn't welcome us, ends abruptly. And yeah, that's uh that is the Heather impromptu stream. A word that the, my keyboard tried to gaslight me into thinking didn't exist. So I end up spelling it wrong. <laughs> that's okay. Revzilla is funny, you know? He's a... Honestly, no. Revzilla is a good guy. He's just... I don't think he... Um, he just does some fact check as much as he should. But he stands very true to his beliefs. And when I had that four-hour conversation with him, um, he, was, he was a decent guy. Like, I don't think... Unless he's... No. Nah, he, like I said, he got hit in the head with the car. He can't be that... Mm -hmm. Maybe, unless, no. There's, Repzilla is very complicated. I don't want to get all into it because I could go on and on. And then I'd, you'd be like, why? <laughs> so, um, exactly, Repzilla who? Repzilla, just that nice man over there who's not Repzion. Repzion's bad. Repzilla's okay. Uh, and that's it. That's it, guys. Um, so, Kenny. Message me and tell me. Jog my memory. I'm going to go see if I can find it. And yeah, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. It's going to be the James Spooky Haunted House stream. And then, what is it, Wednesday? Yeah, I think it's Wednesday. November 1st, we're going to do the Halloween costume contest. So get those in before November 1st, midnight. Please, thank you, so I can prep it. And the winner will get a prize worth at least $20. Maybe more. I don't know. It depends. Depends on uh, who wins. Um, who you're dressed up as, basically. And that's it. I will see you guys all tomorrow. And I hope you have a great Halloween now. A great Halloween. <laughs> Take care, guys.